You're listening to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. Hey, bro! What's up, bro? So what's going on? And away we go, bro! Welcome back to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. This is the only one that brings the firehouse kitchen table right to you. And you know what happens at the firehouse kitchen table, right, Ruff? We were just talking about it. Yeah, All the world problems. We drink... <laughs> We drink, we drink coconut, coconut water, water. and, I don't eat, and eat vegan. Yo, I was, was going to lay that out later. Pete just told us he's drinking coconut water tonight, yes, and he's I been am. having vegan lunches lately. It's mm. delicious. For the it's fiber, great. rough. For the, the fiber. For the fiber. Are you getting enough fiber? By, our show is sponsored by Huel, Huel Vegan Meals. Yes. <laughs> Perfectly balanced with 27 essential yes. vitamins and minerals. No, I don't want to be I want to be sponsored by Man Pants. Can we be sponsored by Man Pants, please? Put your Man Pants on. Please, hey, wait, everybody, put your. Uh, are we sponsored by anyone special tonight? Are we doing a special sponsor? Uh, no, only once a week, right? We only uh, we All do right. the uh, to the uh, Chief Tree Sixty. Uh, I was going to throw out a shout to Jamie, but you've been busy with uh, your thing, so we didn't get to put together a little commercial yet. But we'll get to uh, our boys over at One Source. I just mentioned him again. Anyway, it's the kitchen table where you solve all the world's problems, romance, divorce, sports, right? Politics, plumbing, electric, whatever it is. Mm. We got your answers right here at the kitchen table. We got Ruffy, fresh off his moose hunting trip. Love it. He's back. Hip, I'm hip. He's got Mm. the beard going. I just started growing mine. It's a little behind. It's a little gray. I want to catch up to Beatty. Uh, But before we get started, we got a little happy birthday to a little fella here. It's this little guy's hey. birthday. Hey. Happy like birthday to Odin. Odin, dad yeah. gave him a real cool present, a sword that's about eight feet long. Wow. Make His sure. Conan sword that bought him. Excellent. Nice. Conan sword. Yeah. What's Happy up, birthday, buddy? little fella. All right. Now beat feet. I got a, I got a job to do here. I'll what? see you later. Get a job. All right. That means Saturday. <laughs> Go. See you later. I'll play in traffic, kid. I'll play. Somebody, get, somebody needs to get the hook. You know? yeah. <laughs> Drag him off stage. You know? yeah. We do. Yeah. We, we we are sponsored tonight, though. You know. Even oh, if yeah. we are what? sponsored. What are we sponsored by, Pete? We're sponsored coconut by GettingSaltyApparel.com, where you can have the coldest of coconut water in this tumbler oh, right here. Man. It's available in multiple colors, or maybe the Warren Fuchs inspired saddle up t-shirt I'm wearing, or Ooh. maybe the hat that Ruffy's wearing. I don't know. But don't know. you guys need to figure that out. Maybe you, you can over- have uh, a man's tumbler with some Tito's in it. Oh. I don't know. And maybe you could be slurring your words by mid-show. I'm just <laughs> all the crap in your pants. Whatever happens first, I don't know. But what I do know is GettingSaltyApparel.com mm. is the place to find firefighter apparel and yep. accessories, especially with the holidays coming up. And guys, let me let you know right now, if you need anything uh, lasered, engra- engraved, or anything like that, do it now. Don't do it two days before Christmas or, or Hanukkah if you're Mikey Milner. Don't do it then because mm. we won't be able to get it out to you. So get on that now while supplies last. Get in saltyapparel.com. And also, guys, you know that we are sponsored by you. You, uh, the audience in the Super Chat, are our mm-hmm. syndicators and our sponsors. So if you guys want to break yourself a little something in the Super Chat, hit us up. And if you absolutely positively have a question you need to have answered, hit us in the Super Chat as well. And that, guys, is all hey, the sponsor talk. Hey, about Coops, today. I was thinking of a new uh, slogan for the business, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up? What's that, Louie? What What can Brown do for you? <laughs> oh, oh. oh, look at, look at oh, Pete. Yeah. He's got that already. You know, know what I'm thinking about? You know what I'm thinking about? What can Brown do for you? I mean, didn't they think that through or what? I Listen, mean, you know what I get, I'm thinking about? We got a guy on tonight who's got a size 18 ring finger. They call him Big Mac. Ooh. I Crap. think if he saw a guy eating a vegan lunch, he might hit him. Right <laughs> he might back slap him with a size eighteen ring finger. Why they don't they don't do that in the Sandhogs? They don't they don't eat vegan and drink coconut water down there. They don't. If do he, that? if if That's he would have brought, live longer, you know, if he would have brought a vegan lunch with alfalfa sprouts <laughs> down into the Sandhogs. Did I say I had I'm almost. Sprouts? Sure. I had I'm a allowed, delicious, I'm allowed to add lib. <laughs> succulent and savory meal today that had no freaking cholesterol, <laughs> tons of protein, 20 more yeah. than 20 grams of protein. Delicious, yeah. delicious, excellent. Okay, yeah. and then I ate a burger right. for dinner. Had a How lot of estrogen that? in it, too. I think no, <laughs> no estrogen, buddy. <laughs> right in. Is your estrogen right did you start here. fluffing throw pillows <laughs> or something as soon as you did that? <laughs> he went home immediately and started to fake sway in his house. <laughs> You dick. You dick. 
Oh, All right, listen, we got a right. uh, we got a we got Big Mac in the back here, bro. He's a hard charger. Got out in the eighties. Worked in some hard places, bro. They call him Big Mac for a reason. He's got big hands like a mitt. He was a sand hog. He's a man's man. He ain't eating no uh, veggie burger for lunch. I can tell you that. Right? He definitely ain't drinking no coconut water. So without further ado, let's bring, let's bring in our guest, Big Jimmy McCluskey. There he is. Hey, Big Mac. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? The, the guy's name in itself, Big Mac. It's not. It's not the uh, you know veggie burger. It's the Big Mac. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look at fingers. Look at the size of that hand. What a you know what size they say about guys with big fingers? Huh? Watch that. Big gloves. <laughs> big, gloves. <laughs> big gloves. Right. Big, big heart. Big heart. Nice. Big like heart for the job. Big I heart. Like like Where did you get the name Big Mac? In the Sandhogs or on the uh, job? Probably the Sandhogs. You know the. Uh, the guys down there are pretty rugged, and the uh, they're pretty big guys. I'm I'm about six foot, two fifty, so big With legs, legs, legs like tree trunks, right? Yeah, I got that. You know, so <laughs> I almost cut one off one time. Oh, we, we got, got we got to get into that. Talk there about that. Look at those guys. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a shield down in compressed air in one of uh, the sewer tunnels where uh, they got compressed air on the job, and you only work four hours, you get paid for eight. And it's like being a diver. You got to compress and then you got to decompress to the outside temperature. Huh. You know? Wow. Uh, it's kind of you on the left there, huh? That's with the me beard. with the beard on the left. Yep. Uh, the funny story my father, I'm third generation sand hog. That's how it usually goes, right? From generation yeah, to generation. Son. And uh, my father was trying to sneak out one night in the lock. The lock is where they put the muck. And they usually just blow the lock. You're supposed to sit in there for about eight to 10 minutes. So on the way home on the train, he developed the bends. Oh, he had, shit. had to rush him back to the job to go back into the chamber to get decompressed again. Oh, man. So it's very dead. It's not good for you. It's, uh, I mean, the sand hog business is very rough uh, health-wise. You know, the, my father died from silicosis, emphysema, from the rock dust. The, so what you're saying is that you would probably have benefited from some coconut water and vegan I meals. Do. Right? I yeah. say. Well, we drink a lot of other stuff after work. We, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you, you can light it on fire. I will bet every last one of Refrano, Louis dollars over there that none of those guys has an alfalfa sandwich in their pocket. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now. I don't. I, 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 ate, a, I ate a burger for dinner. So. <laughs> each guy got a round wedge. <laughs> a round wedge. A round wedge. <laughs> nice. And a they pack of reds. Doing. And that's me in the middle with the striped shirt. Yep. Wow. Uh, the, guy, the guy behind me became an inspector in the PD. And all the other rest of the guys are hogs. So you're down there, what, about 300 feet? Well, in that particular tunnel there, we're down about 80 feet. Oh, all it's right. Soft, it's soft ground. That's why they put the compressed air on it, to keep the ground from coming in. Okay, so you're you're so freaking manly that, look, you look like freaking James Bond in high ah. school. This does not look like a high school photo. <laughs> this looks my... like, like your third child is on the way. Like, you know, Matt, that looks like the 20s, well, man. Look at that hair. It's like, I was going like, to say, he, he should have a flapper on his arm. <laughs> I went to Helen's high school, and matter of fact, the first year I was a freshman, I had a black suit on, and when I was walking down the hallways, they were calling me brother because they thought I was a teacher. Because I really like old, yeah. Oh, you went to a Catholic school? I went to St. Helen's High School in the Bronx. Ah, oh, that's uh, where they were able to beat the crap out of you back then and get away yeah, with it, right? Yeah, must they were too. Pretty, they had the marriage brothers; they were tough, you know. Yeah, but they kept you in line. Nothing wrong yeah, with that. Too. He does look like he's doing played uh, four years basketball for St. Helens. So I had a good – my brothers went there. That's why I went there. So it was pretty cool. Is that All where right. you grew up, in the Bronx? Yeah, I grew up uh, 138 in Cypress Avenue. And then we moved up to Fordham Road. And from Fordham Road, I went to uh, Throg's Neck. And now I'm up in Westchester. What? Uh, so at what age did you become a sand hog? Right uh, after high school? I got out of high school in 1972. My father got me the book in the local, and I worked in the tunnel with him in the shaft in Central Park. That was about 800 feet down. And uh, when I left for, to go back to school, I was going to be a cop. And uh, 
I just did. I wasn't a student. I didn't want to be in school. So I said, the hell with it. I want to go out and work for a living. So I went out and worked in the business. So I worked in the hogs for 10, 12 years. And I took civil service exams. And, uh, you know, I took the cop sanitation. Well, sanitation I missed. And then the fire came. And I took that. And that's how I got on the fire department. So you had no family or nobody you knew there was a fireman? No, or? My sister-in-law's brother was a fireman, uh, Michael Boland. He worked in 43 Truck and Rescue 3. He's never he's heard of him. Deceased. He's a real old timer. That's the only one. Otherwise, it was just me. So it was just the luck of the draw. You took all the uh, the uh, tests and the and the P yeah. and the FD called. Yeah, I uh, was supposed to be on the sanitation, and I woke up that morning and I called a friend of mine, and his sister got on the phone and told me that uh, Danny's taking the sanitation test, and I said, "Holy shit, I missed it." So maybe I would have been on the sanitation. I don't huh. know. How'd I'm you very happy being a New York City fireman. Yeah. How'd your father feel about you leaving the Hogs to be a uh, fireman? No problem. He, you know, he was getting old at the time, and he wanted me to be, you know, move on. Right. It's a rough business to be in. Yeah. Health wise, it's terrible. You know. Did Did you do it on the side after you became a fireman? No. Then I became a fireman. I worked on the side, you know, a couple of days here and there. But you know, I didn't want to show up because I had a job. So it's because it's a shape and local. Right. So, uh, a lot of guys don't have work, so they go there and shape in the morning. And, right. So you don't uh, want to be taking something from somebody who right, that's yeah. their only work, right? So yeah. they always told me the union, you know, come around, get a day, at least pay for your dues. But I said, when things are good, you take care of me, and they did. You know. So but, I wonder if the did the Sandhogs have a word of the day because we have a word of the day. Oh, that we forgot. <laughs> that we forgot. Yeah. Just we stuff. You got a mouse uh, in your pocket or something? <laughs> I think the word of the day, Pete. Well, the word of the day, ladies and gentlemen, we do have one. And that word of the day is shaft. <laughs> you know, it's funny. He said it like three different times and I was going to go. He said shaft. Oh, hey, 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 hey. I totally forgot about it, bro. Yeah. He said shaft. Mm. All right. But, you know, those Sandhogs too, right? They'll go, uh, they can work their entire career on one project, right? Well, it depends. The water tunnel is the biggest project. Yeah. But right now, the local, uh, nobody's working. There's no work right now because there's no many tunnels. I mean, we did the water tunnel. We just finished the Second Avenue tunnel, uh, the East Side Access Tunnel, which I was on. You know, it's a big project, put a lot of guys to work. But when you don't work, and yeah. you're on unemployment, you know, you got to save for a rainy day. Yeah. Well, how long those projects, like some of them will go 30 years, right? Those yeah, well, the water tunnel has been going for years now, since the 70s. But yeah. they all don't come out at the same time. Right. Like there's, a, there's a site coming out in Queens. Two shafts are going to go down. They gotta put oh, he said shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Salute. You know what? I, Pete, do me a favor. Stick with the coconut water because you're on your game right here. Yeah, bro. yeah. All you of a sudden, I mean? you look a little crisper. Look you look crisp. a little crisper. I love it's it. It's the uh, my clear headedness from uh, from the <laughs> coconut burger, water from that from that and you, that and you have a burger that I ate for dinner. I was right just going to say, and you have a colon cleanse going, so <laughs> everything <laughs> seems to be working for you. Good job. Work all right, so you take the you take the test and you get called in what in eighty one. You get appointed uh, eighty one. I got on the job. Right. Yeah. I was in probably school and oh, oh look at that guy. Everything's black and uh, brown mustaches now. Now yeah. white. Show him the other one, Pete. Show him the one. No, yeah. look, look at that guy. Probably he looks like one. he's a bodybuilder. He's yeah. now you can tell why they call him Big Mac right there, bro. Big <laughs> you, Mac. You don't want to meet that in a dark alley. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, uh, the one he about, looks like. No, Mr. the other McCluskey. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Mr. McCluskey, the science teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dead man photo. You failed me in chemistry, by the way, in high school. <laughs> I'm absolutely curious about it still. Uh, That's the Proby dead picture. They take you. That's the one they use in the paper. Yeah. When you put it on your file, and if you die on the job, line of duty, yeah, goes in the paper. Yeah, they were like, oh, this guy's a high school teacher. He's on the job, you sure? He does look like a high school teacher in that picture, man. <laughs> he does, he does. Yeah, but back to the point. Jose, so Jose said son of Sam. You do look like the son of Sam oh, in that picture. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know. A son little maybe. No. 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 Nah. Nah. Hold on, hold on. Let's take a look. David Berkowitz. I don't no, think in so. here, in this no. one more than the other one. That <laughs> look at that chin. You know look how long it. it took me to comb that hair? <laughs> 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 I have no problem. 
No he got a little there. Grecian. He got a little Grecian formula in that one, bro. <laughs> a little, a little goo. Yeah, got this one. This working. one's this one's more like definitely the the side. Yeah, you got a little feature, something yeah. going on over here. You had a little something yeah, working. Sideburn so, chops. But, but this one here is my favorite because you, yeah. you could see. Uh, it's a lean mean fight machine right there, yeah. bro. I'm ready for probie school. Yes, sir. All right, so eighty-one, right? Probie school, you go to 45 engine. How'd that work out? You had a little yeah. hook. Well, who'd you call? Well, I did. Uh, I had a friend of mine that was there, Dennis Devlin, who was the chief, died 9 11. Uh huh. Uh, he called me up because we worked in the hogs together and he said, uh, Where do you want to go? And I said, I don't know. I didn't know a tr red truck from a green truck. Uh, he said, Well, why don't you come over to the firehouse one night and uh, check it out? So I did. And he showed me around and he said, Do you know anybody? I said, Well, my brother knows the chief. So we called the chief. And he says, where do you want to go? And I told him 45 engine. He says, well, if I can't get you there, where do you want to go? And I told him 48 engine. And the reason why I said 48, that was my old neighborhood on t -Bot Avenue. Ah. They were on Webster Avenue. So he said, give me a call back in two weeks, which I did. And he says, I got his wife, matter of fact. His name was Jimmy Slevin. Great guy. And uh, he was in yeah. the union and everything. He had his a son, son on the job, too? Yes, his brother. That's his son, Jimmy yeah. Slevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went probably school right. or something. Yeah. And uh, she told me, yeah, everything's set. Have a good career. And oh, so, wow. That's how I went. So when I was at probably school, one of the instructors came up to me and said to me, I hear you want to go to 45 Engine. And I said, yes, sir. He said, well, you're not fucking going there. Oh. I said, well, <laughs> why not? He goes, well, Devlin owes me $50. And if he don't pay it back, you ain't going. <laughs> I'll take care of it. <laughs> I called Dennis that night when I got home and I said, Dennis, you better pay this guy this 50 bucks. Because I, I ain't love it. Nah, fuck him, he's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, the order came down and I went to 45. 45. Was Dennis Gordon there when you went there? He had just left. He went to 38 truck then. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. And, guy, and a man. fine looking firefighter. Well, you that guy. Paulie the Solman there? Excuse me, Jim. Paulie Solman was there at that time. Paulie well, came later on. He came after. As a matter of fact, I nicknamed him Salty. You're talking about Salty getting salty. Yeah. yeah. He was just so into the job. He's a great fireman. Uh, I used to put pictures of him on all the salt shakers in the house. <laughs> <laughs> just so he felt comfortable, you know. Yeah. And he felt accepted, but he, he yeah. was a good guy. He had the nozzle at the hot, Happy Land fire. Yes, he did. Right? He had the Happy Land fire and. Uh, Matter of fact, I came in that morning. I woke up. My wife said to me, Jim, it was a very bad fire down in your neighborhood last night. 87 people died. And I told her, are you drinking? Because yeah, like no way, right? 87 people is a lot of people, unless it was a total building collapse. And maybe eight or seven. But uh, needless to say, I got in the car, went to work. I was going in the morning for a day tour. And uh, the cop stopped me on 179. He says, you know, you lost 87 people here. So wow. I went to the firehouse and went into the house. It was like a command center. But, uh, yeah, they said it was like two cents worth of fire. They were out of the box on 174 in Southern. And Chief Paxton, the 18th, was the chief. Sandy Galando was his aide. And they gave an 18 for a lockout, food on the stove. And on the way back, coming down Southern, they saw the fire blowing out the two doors. And uh, they transmitted to 1075. So the companies got there really quick. Because right. it was all right there, right? All the fire right was just there. right there on the right stairs there. or whatever, right? Yes, Paulie Solomon, two turns with the nozzle, knocked the fire right down. Right, uh, and it was then it was crawling over bodies, right? Yeah, like, Dennis Devlin told me he was crawling on top of the bar because it was just a matter of people on the floor, and uh, the chief didn't want any more victims being pulled outside. Uh, upstairs was the same situation, even with little cocktail tables with people, guy and a girlfriend sitting there, just dead. Wow. Yeah, it was like frozen in time. The staircase in the rear was mobbed with people. The bathroom was crammed with like 20 people. And the only way out of that place was either the front doors or there was a little air-conditioned vent above the window. But they wouldn't know that. Right. And I think the DJ announced there was a fire, and he ran out. And he ran through the fire. He got burned pretty bad. Right, he got burnt. We did, we yeah. did hear that, yeah. But the girl got out. It was a dispute, boyfriend-girlfriend dispute. Yeah, so the one girl who was who was four, she got out, and everybody else died in the yes, place. Everybody else died. There were a lot of Honduras mm -hmm. people in there, and uh, what they did is they breached the number four side of the wall to take the bodies out. 
and they had multiple units there. They would wipe their, they would take a picture of them, then they would wipe their face, take another picture, and then send them to the morgue, which it was a public school across the street. Wow, the makeshift morgue. So when when I came into work, we were out, we were out of service, and we finally came in service. Most of the guys tapped out from the job. And uh, the officer I remember was John Kilroy, which was an old 58 truck guy. And we went over and just looked. Yeah, the fire was out. The bodies were gone. We just to look at the job. You know? But you could tell it was low burning, you know, that he threw the gasoline in and just low char. And one, two, three, the fire was out. Yeah, right. Sucked the oxygen right out of the place. You know? Amazing. But, uh, yeah, that was a big. That was That's a, big a lot break. of years already. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so 25 years, I guess. Yeah. You're so Louis asked ask him the question we always ask when he walked into 45 engine. Uh, what are we how, long, how long are you there before oh, you before you caught your first job. job? First job. Oh, well, first when I walked in, there was a guy sitting at the table with a pole mall hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> his mustache was orange. <laughs> there was another guy there. And they looked at me and said, uh, you got a locker? And I said, yes. Well, go up and change. So I go up and change. I said, man, these guys had a rough night. So I come downstairs. They show me around the rig. And uh, here comes the officer. And who do you think the officer was? That old guy with the, with the cigarette hanging out of his mouth. His <laughs> name was Lieutenant Jack Main. They called him Wacky Jack. He was the greatest officer around. He taught us so much stuff. He came out of 31 truck, rescued three. And his name was Wacky Jack. That's what they called him. Anytime the dispatcher would call him on the air, they would say, like, engine four or five, respond box, so-and-so. And he would always say, 10-4 with pleasure. Everything was with pleasure. <laughs> That's, That's great. great. <laughs> I love we that. I do a job one time with him, and I'm sitting backwards, and I didn't know where the hell we were going. We were making turns or making rights. And all of a sudden, I hear this banging on the window. I thought someone shot at us. <laughs> it was Rocky Jack hitting the back of the plexiglass. Yeah, you had a job. And said, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, said, yeah. We got a job. I said, how do you know? We got a job. Hanging on the window. We got a job. <laughs> you know? like, Holy shit, you know? So sure enough, 1075, and he was a fantastic officer because we had a young company, and he was training us all. You know, he loved fire dude, and uh, just one of those guys. My first fire was with uh, Lieutenant Jenkins. He was an African-American guy, nice guy. And when I came out of probing school, we had these moon helmets. They were Our regular helmet wasn't ready because it was like 300 guys. And uh, we're stretching the line into the building, and he's looking at me from the lobby. And I got this moon helmet on. You know? <laughs> got a big shield. And he's looking at me. And we're stretching the line up, ba ba ba. It's a little fire in the closet, knocked it down. So he grabbed me later on. He said, McCluskey, he says... Where the fuck did you get that gun? <laughs> Lou, they gave it to me out of probing school. <laughs> said, well, I thought we were being invaded by Mark. <laughs> said, when you go back to the firehouse, you get rid of that fucking house. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. You know, so we came back. Two of the guys out the east were volleys. They brought in a couple of helmets. Nice. Yeah. Because we didn't have our regular. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? We but got a picture, a MPD, on a knob. I got you. So it was a minor fire. Knocked it down. That's <laughs> that, that picture showing there is me and Greg Bucheri in the back. Greg had Chan transferred in from 95 inches to 45. And it was some type of a taxpayer fire. We're just washing down. Nice. Nice, yeah. nice man. So uh, you got yeah, masks on too. So when, when it was it, uh, uh, it was a four point five mask, the old mask, right? It wasn't the positive pressure. But we had the little hand light in the helmet seat a little. Yeah, light. I saw it yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was funny at that job with uh, with Jenkins. I had a big flashlight in my pocket, and one of the senior guys said to me, "What's in your pocket?" I told him my flashlight. He says, you're in the fucking engine. You don't need a flashlight. <laughs> you're not working in a truck. I said, well, they told me to bring a flashlight. Throw that in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> when, we came back to, when we came back to uh firehouse in the winter, we were all wet. So the guy told me, get two coffee cans, tie a string on them, and put them in your boots. Because that'll form a perfect circle. It'll be easy to get into your boot and out of your boot. 
And then your gloves, they told me they had two Rheingold beer cans that were empty. And you would put the Rheingold can in the glove and put it upside down on the radiator just to get, you know, warm. And then warm, warm it up. Yeah, dry it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are little tricks that the senior guys have. Craig, Craig posted something I saw. He said, once an eagle, always an eagle, right? That's it. Once an eagle, always an eagle. And then at one time we got the, a green drink, a rig, and uh, the senior guy, John Kosky, made up a sign with a hermit the frog. <laughs> meaning it's not easy being green. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave it to the companies that were close to the highways. We were there to cross Bronx. Right. So I think I've seen that that picture. I think I posted that picture on Instagram well, or something. We got we got into more accidents with that rig. We really? His door. They were crashing into his left and right. <laughs> but that didn't last too long. That didn't last too long. I think 41 got one too, right? They had a green Yeah, 41. 42. 263 had one. 42 yeah. engine got one. Right, 42 engine. Yeah. <clears throat> you were, uh, if you crashed the rig, you wouldn't get the shaft, would you? Oh! <laughs> Once an eagle, always an eagle. I like it. A dog. Hey, Petey, Petey, slow down on that coconut water, fella. Oh, I don't want you to get too dipsy. I don't want to, don't want to poop my brains out. You know? yeah. We had some uh, senior guys in 45 engine that broke us in. Bobby Straub, Tommy Dunn, Georgie White, Dale Manners. Great, great firemen. They seen it, you know, in the 70s and 80s. We were right. getting to work in the 80s because we had a lot of vacants. So it was like a great training ground for that. A matter of fact, then the white, the red caps came in. The marshals tried to calm it down a little bit, and they made an arrest on Tremont and Buys. And my lieutenant, Wacky Jack, said, "Let's make a collection up, and we could bail his." Bail him out. <laughs> we need this guy in the street. We don't need. Him we need fire duty. We need time on, not time off. So, That's well, well you it. mentioned the red caps. Those were like a, a certain fire marshals, marshals, right? That. Yeah. Uh, they really flooded the area, and it calmed the fires down for a while. Yeah. yeah because we had ton. I mean, you would get a ticket on a computer, uh, you know, vacant structure. As soon as you'd open the door, you smell it. You knew you had a job. Right. You know, you'd be laying in the bunk room and saying, come on, we got a job. You could smell it. Or you could see the embers blowing over the Cross Bronx Expressway. Yeah, just waiting for the ticket. Avenue. Yeah, yeah. Boone and the whole Avenue and Bys Avenue. Uh, big time, you know. So there was a lot of... It was good training grounds. We loved it. You know, we wanted to go to fire every five minutes. Right. You know, we had a lot of car fires. Uh, not too many pin jobs. Once in a while, we get one on the Cross Bronx. You guys weren't working 24s back then, right? Straight. Yeah, we were doing 24s. Yeah. 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 They let us do the 24s. Uh, but it was a great house, great experience. The guys I worked with were great. You know. What does the line gold taste like? Rhine gold? Yeah, it was a, I think it was an old throw by can because. Those were the cans we used to use to shoot off the hydro when we were kids. Right. Yeah, right. Cans and shoot the fuzzy because you don't think it tasted good. You can't do it. I don't, think it, down, good. You know? I don't right. think it tasted good. Right. And uh, yeah, there was some senior guys in 45 engine. I think uh, Louis Visconti got out of there, Cliff Bonish. I think uh, Vinny Dunn was in 45 at one time. Oh, is that right? Well, huh. it, well his, his cousin Tommy was one of our senior guys. Oh, you know where Vinny was? Vinny was in 59 engine with 30. That's where he was. 59 with 30. Yeah. You know that place? Yeah, I know a little bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, before we get there, so you do only two years in the engine, what makes you want to go to the truck? Yeah, well, you know, that's another funny thing. We're sitting on the back step all the time, and I used to see these guys running in the building. And I'm like, how come we're not going in? And they were all coming out laughing. Like they saw some lady with a C2 blouse on. <laughs> giggling. I said, man, I got to get into the truck. We got to get into this building. <laughs> but I'd rather work with my hands with the tools. You know, if you're not on the knob putting that fire out, that's the greatest thing. Yeah. I had a couple of good jobs on the knob. It was, you know, one next door to the firehouse. They had a division conference. And we're in the bunk room making beds. And all of a sudden, we hear glass breaking, people screaming. They said, there's a fire next door. So we ran downstairs. The rig was already pulling out of the firehouse. I jumped on the side. I almost fell off the rig. And that's how I wound up with the nozzle because I was the first one off the rig. Because we used to fight for the nozzle all the time. You know, we tied guys' mask up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I heard in Brooklyn, they put garbage cans over the hydrants, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we tie up your mask because we want to get the <laughs> and, uh, oh, So it was a good shit. job. It was one of the good first good jobs I had, really. So you guys didn't have a – like somebody wasn't assigned the Nas in the beginning of the tour, or maybe he well, was? They did, just... they did, but they didn't uh, – oh. whoever was – if you were fast enough to get out there, if you're in the jump seat, you're going to get it. <laughs> right. So okay. two years, and you go to 58, right? Yes. Yes, then I went to 58 truck. Right. Uh, again, great offices. Uh, Captain Roach, Billy Bush, Ronnie Sedario, uh, Gene Sennett, all senior guys that worked went through the war and uh, worked in the tower. And it was good doing truck work. I like doing truck work. Yeah. Did. doing searches and again we had guys there that were senior that did it so they taught us you know yeah if they were senior guys they were there for the whole yeah. thing in the 60s yeah. and 70s right we would always take us out we'd be cutting roofs for drill and forcing doors get a couple of nails nail some doors and break them down and do some overhaul breaching walls just to get through just training you know training was great i love training right That's well you had a, you had a lot of vacants over there too so you we could... had a ton of vacants a ton of vacants right. Matter of fact, we even took some of the roof rafters back to quarters and we built a racquetball court in the back of quarters. With the roof rafters. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. The ones that were near the shaft. Mm -hmm. Oh! oh hey. Hey. Uh, we're losing Pete already. That's it. Too much coconut water. Now, any of those guys, I would say a lot of those guys had to be Vietnam vets, right? Did you work with your uh, share? I had some guys that were in the service, like Bob O'Rourke. Uh, Richie DeCola, uh, Eddie Harrington, Stanley Dorr. He became a big chief in the job. Uh, Eddie Harrington, who else? Uh, Eddie McEntee, all senior guys. You know, they, they did it all. And, uh, when, you, when, you, when you look back on your career, like early on, like who's the guy that really sticks out to you, who taught you the most, like you really looked up to and, and had the most uh, accolades for, you know? I'll tell you the truth, in 58, it was all the senior guys. They treated us all evenly, and we were all grouped together, young firemen. We all wanted to learn, and they took time out to teach us, you know, little tricks of the trade. Maybe you're not supposed to do it, but we did it. But they, they took an uh, interest in all of us. You know, there wasn't, nobody was one-on-one, -on -one, ten point, you know. But if you had a problem, they'd talk to you. You know, if you did something wrong, they'll tell you, you know, don't do this, do that. And that's the way I did it when I became a boss. I trained the guys, you know, do something. Don't do nothing. You know, yeah. you're not going to be fired. When in doubt, do something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you do something, we'll talk about it. You know, you'll, you won't do it again. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No I'll doubt. I'll tell you another good story. In 58 truck, I had the roof. Me and this guy, Willie Smith, there was a multiple alarm. We went in a second alarm or something. And we were operating on the roof and cutting and trenching and the whole nine yards. Good job. We come back to quarters and the chief grabs me, Chief Scolan, 18th battalion. He said, Jim, did you have the roof? I said, yeah. He says, how come you didn't take the skyline? I says, what are you talking about, chief? I said, we weren't on first due. He said, well, that job, it was a third or fourth alarm. Nobody ever took the skyline. So I learned from that day on to take that skyline. A lot of guys, you know, and I always tell the guy, <clears throat> you roll into a job on a multiple alarm and get on that roof. Go over what the first new roof man would have did. Because he might have been inexperienced. He might have been a little excited. You know, he might have got the bulkhead and got a little bit of smoke came out. But you got to get that skylight. Because they might even have the door locked downstairs. They're not in yet. Right. Now you start doing other things, doing your perimeter and everything else. And now it's too late. You forget about the skylight. Mm -hmm. They would have got that skylight. It would have lifted much easier for the brothers down below. For the engines moving in with the line. So that's one thing I always stuck, and I always train my guys. I don't care what it is. It's for 1075. You, I want the skylight taken. You, know. you can always replace the glass. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I was looking at a picture of 45 uh, and the truck. It looks like 40. What were they, a single engine first, and they just did an add-on of a new was, firehouse? What it was was the engine 45, an old brown building, and then the right. back was the 18th. It was the battalion office. Right. And then. 58 came because 58 truck used to be 27 two. They were over on uh, third Avenue and then they became 58 truck. So they built the new building right next door. Right. We just moved the battalion over. Cause yeah. whenever, whenever you see pictures of 45, like for years, I thought that what the hell I thought that there were, uh, 
a single engine because all you see is the old firehouse with 45 yeah. over. Well, at one time, I guess in the 70s, they were, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but then when they <laughs> when they disbanded 27-2, they made 58 trucks. And all those guys went over there to 58? Yeah, Is that what yeah a lot of guys went over there to 58, most of them, yeah. And they were all, uh, like I said, senior guys, you know. But uh, Great place, yeah. man. Yeah, good house, good house. We got a lot of work. We had the training grounds, you know. It was vacant. So we go out every day and do something, you know. Right. What other companies uh, did, did you uh, run in with over there? Who else did that? We ran in there? with, uh, let's see, 8838, another senior on Belmont Avenue. Uh, 9041 on White Plains Road, uh, 31 8231, and 54 96 of 54. Mm. We ran in with all those companies, you know, and 27 truck, 46 and 27. So we had a good area, I mean, it was great, you know. Yeah, those are all heavy hitting trucks yeah. over there. Pete, we have pictures of him in 58. <clears throat> I do. I was gonna ask him about one in 40, but uh, 45, but that we're moving on. So, uh, 58, here we go. Oh yeah, look at that guy. That was uh, on, I was a chauffeur, and that was that multi-unit drill. I think we were just. Seven. What about the chauffeur? Hey Pete, zoom in on those feet. What size shoe do you wear? What the hell is <laughs> that? In my ring finger, eighteen. <laughs> eighteen shoe. See that finger? I show you the ring. Eight? No, no, I did size eleven. <laughs> Not that big. Well, maybe, uh, maybe I borrowed some shoes. You think he's got day. fucking flippers on? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> he's going diving. He's got flippers on. Yeah, right, yeah. So you got an 18 size ring finger, huh? It's, it makes for a nice yeah. Dombrowski off somebody's head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I have a 20 year ring on that my wife and kids bought me. Can you get it off? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. I have a little salt. I can't get it off. But. Yeah. <laughs> I could probably use it as a belt. Right. Let me ask you a quick question here. If we're on 58, can you tell us the uh, the story behind this picture here? This was a grab. Right. This picture here, this was a fire down on Boone Avenue. Matter of fact, it was a 9th Division box, which the 9th Division was up in uh, 90 and 41. But uh, it was 1075, third floor fire. John Newell and I think Danny Monahan next to him, they threw a 35-footer up in the rear. But they came up short where the woman was at the window. And we went in through the interior, me, Matty Ryan, and uh, Frank Donnelly. And we found the woman right at the door, and we took her out. Uh, Matty Ryan since passed away. In he, died, he died on 9-11, right? He was a chief yeah. in the 4th Battalion? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think he was a Brooklyn guy. I don't know if he was in the 4th. Nice guy. Great. His kid's on the job. Yeah. He came out of the 92 engine. But uh, we had the only thing we had was a bed sheet. But Chief Sloan made a comment that he hasn't seen a 35 footer in the rear in years. Really? So, tip of the hat to uh, John Newell and Danny Monahan. They put that up in the rear, was, but they came up short. I think she showed at the bathroom window, which was a little small. Higher. Yeah, yeah, higher and smaller. But it would have been tough getting her out of that window. But, oh, uh, hell yeah, that small window? Yeah. Absolutely. So that was uh, there was also another job over with eighty eight thirty eight where we got sent over where a woman showed at the window and she was a retarded girl she was she was probably about eighteen years old and Vinnie Albanese the chauffeur of thirty eight when he went up the aerial she got scared and we ran back in the apartment and tough Timmy Gallagher dove in and rescued her from the interior and he got all burnt. But she was such a large girl, we had to take her out through the window on the bucket. And I remember that was like one of my first burn victims because I had the back of her head in my hand. And by the time we got down to the floor, you know, I had a handful of hair and skin. Skin and, and everything, oh, yeah. 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 She would have stayed at the window. Vinny would have got her. But she didn't realize. She didn't know what was happening, you know. But that hey. was Good job, eighty-eight thirty-eight. Yeah, they're all calling for you to show your calves in the chat here. Uh, <laughs> you gotta stand up to do that. <laughs> Only if you're not wearing white socks. We don't want to upset oh, Chief. I got those. You want to see it? Yeah, throw them out there. Everybody's saying he's got to show his calves. Be able to see it. Now. Let me see. I roll it down. Oh. oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's hey. still got it. He's still got it. What is that, a ham hock? Looks like a ham hock. 
What, yeah. what is it, Christmas? You got a ham going on over there? <laughs> yeah, they, they buckle up once in a while with eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, they do like up. I used to do it. Where was the job yeah. that you had where you almost cut your leg off? What was that in Rescue that was another, Yeah, good job. It was a day tour. Back like in where? where were you working? In 58 truck. Oh, Hold on, truck. I just need to yeah. back that up one second. What was the job that, that you cut your leg off? Oh, yeah, that was another good job. <laughs> it like, good. You people are sick. You guys got problems. <laughs> you know, I love it. I love people it. People run out of the buildings. We run into buildings. Yes, yeah. sir. You know, we uh, help everybody. We help if you're poor, you're rich. We're still it don't matter. Out. Yep. We go vacant buildings. Could be a squatter. We're going balls to the wall to get you out. Yep. That's one thing about the fire department. Yeah. And, uh, we don't ask questions like, are you, are you drinking nah. coconut water? We don't ask questions <laughs> like that. We, we just go right in for them. Are, are you a vegan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so but, tell uh, us the story. Was a day cut your leg off. Yeah, that was a day tour, and uh, I had the OV, and I responded to a phone alarm for fire. You get off the rig, you could smell we had a job, so I went to the rear of the building. Couldn't see anything. I was with the roof man was with me, Mike right. Bell, and uh, – I said, we got a job, but I can't see where it is, you know? So he said, well, I'm going to the roof. He went up the rear fire escape. I went out to the front, and I saw smoke pushing the top floor windows. I said, okay. I get the saw. over his job, top floor. Put the saw in the bucket, go up and cut a hole. <clears throat> so as I'm going up, I saw the two windows where I was going to cut, and I put the bucket on the roof, got onto the roof. What I did was I shouldn't have did I jumped from the bucket to the roof. That's like an impact blow. That's not good. You know, Especially when you big Mac. That's yeah. good. I mean, that's not like a static load. That's impact load. <laughs> so anyway, I get off and I cut the saw. I know right where I'm going to cut. And I put a slice in and uh, fire shoots out. So I said, okay, let me back up a touch. I'm going to get two rooms and maybe the hallway. I put a slice in. I start my second slice and I was top heavy. So I felt my toes falling like, and I was like, I couldn't get back. And what happened, the whole roof collapsed. I went into the cock loft with the saw running. I probably had the trigger full blast. And uh, when I got into the cock loft, the fire blew out. So I had to go to the side. I burnt my hand. And Mike pulled me out from behind. When he pulled me out, uh, my pants burnt right off me. And my right knee was cut open like a side of beef. So I just grabbed it. And uh, they came upstairs. They gave May Days and all that. And uh, they put a pillow around it and wound up sending me to the hospital. I wound up to be in the hospital for like eight days. Uh, the burns were second-degree burns on my calves. The cut was down to the joint. I cut the muscle. Oh, how many stitches did you wind up getting? They, they didn't stitch it. It was so deep, they they let it heal from the inside out. What they did was they put a, a tube in my leg. And every day in the hospital, they come by. And they drain it. They drain it. So if you looked at the scar on my knee, it looked like a surgeon did it. <clears throat> People ask me, you got a new knee? I said, no, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my work. <laughs> That's my work. <laughs> so, uh, I remember oh, the shit. Lehigh shoes I was wearing. The, the insteps were burning my toes. So uh, one of the officers came up, Mike Toppy, Eddie Tierney, uh, Hollywood. They came up on the roof. They wrapped me up. And they put me on the bucket to take me down. And as we were coming down the bucket, EJ was running the uh, joystick. And I mentioned to him, EJ, don't rem remember now, you got to boom up. Don't retract because I'm on the power. He says, don't worry about it. So I had like three guys bear hug me into it. All I see is sky. And what does he do? He retracts. And the bucket <laughs> the goes bucket, like this. The whole parapet comes down and the bucket is like a... I'm looking up. I said, I'm gonna fucking die here. <laughs> but, uh, needless to say, they brought me down, and uh, I was in Jacoby for like eight days. They did how a long, great job. How long you out of the job? And I was out of the job a year. Wow! wow. I had to get the uh, my right knee, the muscle back. You know, I had atrophy. I cut the right. Back. So I used to work out like three days a week to get the strength back in the leg. Right. I did a little light duty with the marshals, then I came back. Good thing so, you had those big giant hocks for legs, bro. Otherwise, you would <laughs> right telling off. Me, telling me, Mac, you hit the lottery. I said, "What are you talking about?" He said, "You get out of job with that." I said, "I don't get out of the fucking job. Right. I'm going back tomorrow if I can." 
Yeah. yeah I only you, had seven years on the job then. Because you caught oh, a good, yeah. because you caught yeah, a good one. Early. You caught a yeah, good one yeah. when you almost lost your leg. I get it. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> actually, my fa- my my wife's grandfather was uh, in World War II, similar situation. He got sniped by a German, uh, caught it through the spleen, and they kept him open uh, just like that and kept draining him just like yeah. that until it healed from the inside. And then they had to, like, stretch his skin to seal him back or whatever. It was horrible. Yeah. But, yeah, and it's not the first time I heard of that. Pain-wise with the burns because when you come out of a, <clears throat> a fire, you cook like a roast beef. You're still cooking. You know what I mean? Oof. Well, the pain right. was the burns, but the the cut was the serious because it, it just missed my kneecap. So I wow. think it would have hit that. That would have been it for me. <clears throat> so. That was the plan. You had more years in you, fella. A lot more. Yeah, the team you guys would have got out. They said. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Yep. We came back and. So how long, how many years did you do when you came back in '58 before you decided to uh, look elsewhere? '87. I wound up on a fluke on a uh, rescue because. Uh, <clears> Tell us how that shoulder. happened. Huh? How did that happen? I hurt my shoulder and I was going on light duty. I was trying to uh, get a light duty job in the division, but they had nothing, so they they signed me to sock. So when I went out there, I met a chief that I knew, and I said, "Chief, said, what are you doing?" I said, "I'm on light duty." He says, well, put him in the messenger van. So I went in the messenger van. And they said, can you work today? I said, yeah. So I worked the day tour, 24. The next set I came in, there was mobs of people in the firehouse. That was the night Marty McTee got burnt. Oh, shit. An explosion. So I was jockeying his wife and kids back and forth. You know, just doing the bag and stuff like that. And then uh, Jack Corcoran was in rescue liaison. And he, uh, he said he told me he had to go see Fusco because they probably want me to take Rescue 4. There's no commander there. So he says, if you want to come, I've got a spot for you. So I said, well, I'm on the lieutenant's list. Sometimes officers don't want to take guys that are on the list. Right. I wanted to get made out of 58, but I wanted to experience a little more work, you know. So I sat on it for a while, and I told him I'd like to come, and he brought me out to Rescue 4. That's how I wound up there. He was a what, great guy, wasn't he? Oh, great, what a gentleman. Guy, sweetheart, sweetheart. Great guy, great fires. Another guy went through the war, you know? Yeah. He's a 19 truck guy, 26 truck guy, him and Jack Fanny. Oh, my goodness gracious. Real, yeah. real uh, good guys, you know? And uh, right, he, tell, tell us your experience when you first met uh, Maury the Jericho Jew for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> first time I seen him, it was like a Memorial Day. He was out on quarters. On the sidewalk with a, a mop on the head. <laughs> he had a mop. He had a mop on his head, right? Yeah, and he had a tie dye shirt on and he had a pair of jeans. And he's yelling at everybody that's going on. <laughs> he actually <laughs> showed us that picture, right, Rufus? Yeah, he was crazy. The show? I yeah, said, yeah. guy's nuts. He came from the Bronx. He was a good guy, Mike. He's in, he's in the chat right now, Mikey Milner. Very experienced guy. I mean, yeah. so what year? What year was that when you were there? Uh, you I got there in. Uh, I was there for three years. I did two remember, remember you. 95. That's where I, rem- I remember you, Jim, because I was in one seventeen. Yeah, yeah and I, I remember you showing up at jobs. Yeah. So. Uh, so who yeah, else was there when you got the four? What other guys were there besides uh, Mikey Milner? Yeah, Richie Euler was there, right? Richie Euler, one eleven. Dodge, one oh eight. Tough guy, uh, Macquarie, uh, Chico, uh, who else? Dougie Sloan was there. Leave me alone, Doug Sloan. Leave me alone. Well, Doug Sloan was a sand hog with me, too. Oh, yeah, really? He was a I tough guy, too, man. Oh, yeah. He was a tough he dude. Worked. He was a tough guy. He was. And, uh, <laughs> Billy Bolger came back later on. The lieutenants there was Captain Corcoran. You had Jack Duggan, uh, Kenny Memon, and then Terry Hatton. Those were the four officers. And Hatton had just got there when uh, Lieutenant Williams passed away. Mm. You, you know what? It. That's that's funny, uh, Jim, too, because I remember as a kid going to jobs and seeing Hatton show up, and he yeah. looked so young. Mm. I remember looking at him thinking to myself, holy mackerel, this guy's in Rescue 4. He was always prepared, right? He had the hood. Uh, Back then was, when nobody had hoods, right? I mean, right. he was just squared away. The first night I worked with him, we went to get the meal. And, you know, I was new, so I wanted to blend in with the guys. And uh, he told me, you stay back. The guys were in the store. I said, well, Lou, let me go in with the guys, you know. 
pick up the meal. That's part of the job. Right, right, right. He says, no, you stay out here with me. And he drilled me for like 40 minutes, you know, asking me all kinds of questions. You know, tenement fires, this fire, taxpayer fire. You wear a cheater, you do this, you know. But he was just into the job. He loved the fire dude. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, he was good. I enjoyed working with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Petey McLaughlin was there too, right, then? Petey was there too. Another great guy. Well, man, I can't believe he's gone. A real tough guy, man. He uh, when he died enough. I was working that day in 29 truck as a lieutenant. And uh, I heard the fire going on. It sounded bad. The captain came in and said, uh, what's going on? I said, there's a big job going in Queens. Somebody got hurt. So he called up his brother-in-law, which was the beef man, Tree Trio. Tree yeah, Trio. Trio. Tree Trio. It was his brother-in-law, and he turned over to me. And he said, Pete's dead. I said, what? So I jumped in my car, and I went out there. and went to the hospital, and me and Michael Harrah, another good guy from uh, Brooklyn, I think he's 176 truck, tough, tough as nails. And uh, we went in, and uh, the marshals wouldn't let us go in, but – after coaxing him, they let us in to see Pete. You know, he was in bad shape. But uh, he was too young, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now he got in that back bedroom. Yeah. I think the ceiling blew down. Because if you look at the pictures of him when they were taking him out, the sole of his foot was off. Oh. Pete, Pete always had a tendency of kick, kicking indoors. And me and EJ went to that job the next day and looked at it. And the scissor gates that were on the window. Yeah, I was there too. You could tell that it was kicked from the inside. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Not like an OV coming in off the fire escape. Yeah, so he was trying so to get out of that. He was trying to get. He was a strong, strong ass kid, boy. Yeah, you know Big he dude. had a whole future ahead of him. What a guy! And uh, his date was ten eight, and I always say that he's ten eight up in heaven. You know? Ten eight available. Yeah, he's he was a great guy, man. <clears throat> was uh, was the Quickster there too? Then no, Quickster. He wasn't there. He got. Sent away for a while. And oh yeah, right. That's right. right. Probably after the uh, after the Mati job, right? He yeah, got right. Out of there. Yeah, something happened, and uh, he did come back, but then he left again, hmm. and he wound up in the big house in Rockwood. But I never right. got one thirty four. Right, right, yeah, right. I never got a chance to work with him. But I heard a lot of stories about him. Hmm. Yeah, was, that big, uh, uh, volleyball tournament in his memory. Right. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> was Liam there too at that time? No, Liam came after. Me. After. <clears throat> I had a guy, Chuck Pavoni. He was a senior guy. Ralph I remember Graham. him. I remember Ralph him. Williams. Remember yeah. Ralph? Ralph, well, who else? Uh, uh, Bob Bowden was there. Uh, Eddie Monahan. Yeah. Eddie, did you, uh, Jim, did you end up going to, when Rescue 4 went to 262, did, were you there at that time? No, he was gone by then. No, he was. He was gone in 95. But it's funny, we used to go out to one of those companies then. They, they used to break chops. They'd keep, walk off the rig with a clipboard and a ruler, and they would start measuring the floors, and the guys were going crazy. <laughs> they didn't want rescue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. You know, the rescue, they didn't like the rescue. Yeah. yeah. That's one thing I couldn't take was, the, you know, you get the stare down. You yeah, don't yeah, want to yeah. do jobs, and you get the stare down. You know, I'm not there to take your job. I'm there to help you, you know? Yeah. How yeah. would your relationship uh, when you were up in the Bronx with Rescue 3? No, no problem. Well, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Because, well, when I was in the Bronx, mostly they were in Washington Heights. You know, they weren't over on the Third Avenue yet. But we never, I never had a problem with any of them. Even right. as a boss working in Harlem, I was there for 14 years. I never had a problem with Rescue or Squad. They're all good guys. I know them all. Mickey Conboy, Sean Genovese, John Hassett, all good guys. You know, good yeah. fun. They just yeah, long time guys, old old guys. <clears throat> yeah. What other uh, another, uh, another, another lieutenant, Ralph Tizo. What a oh, guy. he was a great yeah. guy. He was my lieutenant in fifty eight truck with uh oh was he? Donald, yeah. I'm trying to get him too. I'll Tizo, get him. Oh, he's great. What a fire officer he is. Yeah, he went I'll over to thirty three. Then I think he went to squad for a while. Then I think he became captain of three. Rescue three. He was captain yeah. of rescue three, yeah. Frank Donnelly, he came as a new officer. He was, oh, unbelievable, that guy. And then he became a battalion commander in the 16th. I had a good couple of good fires with him up there. He was like Mr. 73 when he was a fireman. He did it all. He had hair down to his shoulders. And then one day he came down with the books under his arm and a tie on. 
Ah, it all changed. <laughs> Are those white socks? <laughs> yeah. Well. Well, uh, yeah. So you have any you have any other jobs that stick out in your mind when you were in Rescue Four? Uh, well, let's see. We went to the World Trade Center bombing. Uh, we volunteered for that. That was in '92, three, I think. Yeah. How about the chef? Oh, oh. Uh, we have the chef. Very, very good one. You, you're back on your game, Moose Hunter. You, you got a gift. Yeah, I was, I, was home. I was home that day, and I heard it on the TV that a, a winch fell down the shaft. Oh, the yeah. shaft. And uh, all of a sudden, my phone rings, and it's Terry Hatton. He listened to everything. He said, Jim, there's a winch fell down the tunnel. He says, would you come in early because you know the tunnel? I said, yeah, I'm coming in tonight. I'll come in right now. He said, stay by your phone. Stayed by my phone. He called me up later on. He said, Jim, it's just a recovery. They got everybody out except one guy. So when I went in that night, we went to the to the job site, and uh, we got into a bucket. We went down, me, Hatton, uh, Freddie Scholes. I think O'Hara was with us. And we got all the way down, but there was just too much water. So we had to get it pumped out. So it was the day before Thanksgiving because – Terry Hatton took an early, they were rotating the rescues every three hours. And Terry took the early one because he figured we're going home for Thanksgiving. I told him, Terry, I said, the, that water's not going to be pumped out by then. And, you know, it's all borrowed, it's all rescued. Let's, let us be here to take him out. So that's what we did. So uh, they pumped it out. They would rotate the rescues <clears throat> over there. Uh, went down in the shaft and we found the uh, worker. His, his name was Anthony Otto, which cut in half. His face was a little banged up. We cleaned him up a bit, put him into a body bag, brought him up top, you know, and uh, we let the sand house carry him out with the fireman. Uh, but prior to that, when they first got the box, Lieutenant Memon was the boss. And he had uh, Mike Milner with him. I don't know the other guys that were with him, maybe Ray Strong, I'm not sure, but I know... Mike went down the shaft, and for someone not knowing the shaft, it's kind of hairy. You know, I, mean? I knew the shaft. But... I would hit the bell, but <laughs> gonna... chef, everyone, chef, get... chef, chef, on your own volition, everyone. I'm gonna stop. So you say you say, Mikey, he did a good job with that he one. He did a great job going. And anyone, I would say, anyone that went down there that wasn't a hog doesn't know the conditions. Right. right. You know, I mean, I worked it, I knew it, but for him to go down and Maneuvered through the it was it was a wreck. It was uh, so what what actually had happened? I, that's well, the one happened with, with, right? It was it was they were, the, the, <clears throat> they were in the concrete mode, and what they had is the forms were on the concrete, and they had these three winches on top of the shaft that would cantilever into the shaft and run the cable down <clears throat> to the forms, hook to the forms, and just take a strain on it, you know. But whatever happened, one of the winches fell into the hole. How that happened, I don't know. And it went down. I mean, it should have killed everybody because they were all down there working in the in the tunnel like that. It's a, it's a catwalk around. And that's where you work. And that thing took everything, took them into the water. Guys were hanging on for dear life. Some guys lost bits of fingers and banged up pretty good over it. But only one guy passed away. How many guys did they pull out of there then? Uh, they had to pull out six guys maybe. And who, yeah. who rescue four pulled them out, or the yeah. hogs? Get them? Well, did. the hogs probably got most of them, but then when rescue four showed, I'd have to have to ask Mike. He was there. I wasn't there for that. Right. We don't he, like to give Mike too much credit. No, we love he Mike. Down in the bucket, he did. Uh, like I said, anyone that was down there, not knowing what they're going into, it's kind of that's tough. It's balls. Yeah. Do you have that video, Pete? Don't we have a video of that? I job? do. Stand by. Um, here it is. There it is. 
That was it. Yeah. yeah. That was a tough accident, that one. Hmm. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Any other jobs from four? They, uh, well, before we yeah, yeah. To... I was there not long. We had a woman uh, tripped in front of a house with her groceries, an old Italian woman, and was impaled with a, a fence through her mouth. Oh, that was the one with the fence. And, uh, but that there was two. There was one before I got there. Oh, with ago. the kid. It was a kid. They have they have the spike in the back. Right. They have the yeah, fence yeah, yeah. in the firehouse. Mm -hmm. So we roll into this one. It's an old lady, and she's got the spike through her chin, out her mouth. Jeez. Teeth are broken, and she tripped right in front of her own house. Oh. So what we had to do was we uh, they got a torch, <clears throat> they cut both sides of the fence, they wrapped it with gauze, wet it down, they cut it with a torch, and I remember we had a brake pedal on the job on the rig. So I got the brake pedal, and we cut the bottoms of the the post, and we had to transport her with the fence to the right. house. So we transported to the hospital. It was like a convoy. And Lieutenant Member was the boss. And he said, two guys got to suit up and go into the emergency room to cut out the rest of the fence. So it was Freddie Scholes and somebody else. Because Freddie was a carpenter. He was good with the saws on. And uh, all of a sudden, the doctor came walking out of the emergency room. He had the fence in his hand. So he must have probed <laughs> around and took it out. Right. But what they feel was... The spike was up like this, and it had two curls on it, like fancy. So I think that saved her from going down any further. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Stopped yeah. it. Yeah, stopped it. But uh, huh. she was she was old too. She was up in her age, you know. Wow. But she worked out all right. That kid, he didn't have any of those little curls. That thing no. went straight up. Yeah. It was like up here. That was like a friggin' sword. Oh my yeah, god. Man. Yeah. Every time I see that picture when I used to go into the firehouse, I say to myself, my God, yeah. how lucky that kid got. It was just coming right out of his and mouth. You had the picture of the kid's face and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right <laughs> yeah. yeah. We had that one that time, Ruffy, with the kid. Where it went through the back of his knee. Yeah. He was jumping over something. the fence. Yeah. Yeah, I cut that. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. We had numerous pin jobs, you know, on the, on the Queens Boulevard. There was always accidents on there. Right. So we had some good, you know, working with the Hearst tool. I enjoyed that. So they, uh, that was the for all the listeners. If you don't know Queens, New York, the Queens Boulevard was labeled the Boulevard of Death right. uh, for a very long time. I, as a matter of fact, saw the worst thing I've ever seen: two yellow cabs racing for a light. Light turns. One guy screeches to hit the brakes. The, the other guy blows it and hits a 80 year old couple trying to cross Queens Boulevard. Both of them go flying through the air. Worst thing I've ever seen on that boulevard, man. But it was oh. every single day. That yeah. boulevard every single day. Yeah. Rich, Richie Euler used to call it the boulevard of broken dreams because we go up and down that a hundred times, you know. But yeah. the rest of you gets tattooed a lot, you know. Yeah. How um how did you adjust coming from 58, you know, with the first two work now going to a soft unit where you, uh, you know, it was different. It was well, look different. at him. I think he adjusted quite well. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the soda can I have in my hand. Hey. You don't got to spray to us. You don't spray to us, Lucy. You have to, you have to keep your tools clean. I was always taught that. Yeah. I remember the 16th Battalion, Chief Norm came over one day and told me, uh, Mac, your tools are dirty. I was embarrassed. I had to have the company clean the tools. You know, uh, it was a rainy night. They got a little rusty. They just forgot to do it. Hmm. But uh, when I was in 30 Truck, I had great senior guys. I had a. Uh, Al Grogan, great show for great senior man. Kenny Herman, Anthony Shallow. I had that job down in uh, Broadway in 100th Street. I think it was like a fifth alarm. That's where that guy, Matty Bonds, made the rescue of the baby on the top floor window. But we operated in that house, that building for uh, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth floors operating, just forcing doors and searching. And just AD engine was moving the line from floor to floor. It was a multiple alarm. Chief Gancy had the job. Uh, that was another good job in Harlem. Harlem, Harlem, yeah. Harlem, Harlem. Oh, so it was you were forced to see that. Let's see that helmet. Let me see that helmet there. Pete, show the oh, thirty. Yeah. Well, first of all, what which helmet are we? Do we want to see the the, the R four helmet? Right? Nope. Yeah. Thirty. Yeah. There's a, well, there's no R four first. We're yeah, at, we're at thirty. Maybe? I, I I told as I told uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Smoky that helmet. What is that? I was gonna say I could. What is smell that? Three fifty for four hours. What is that over there? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so cool. 
<laughs> slow, then, <laughs> slow cooking. It's in the broiler. <laughs> and then in turn, this one. Ah. Right and if you notice the helmet, I put two spikes in the front. I like know? it. Ah, <laughs> look at that. Like hell. I worked with a guy that used to put these two balls on there, like brass balls. But I couldn't find them, so I got two spikes and I put them on there. I like nice. that. Yeah, a little wheels a bub. Little touch to the helmet, you know? Yeah. All right, so we got ahead of ourselves a little. So you spent yeah. a few years in Rescue Four, and then you got promoted. Were you ready? Were you ready to be promoted yet, or you, you could you? Yeah, spend you know, I enjoyed time? Rescue. I was only there three years. I wish I was there a little longer. Yeah. You know, I told Captain Jack, you know, I'm on the list, and he said, "That's all right. Come on out." So I enjoyed it. I met some good guys, you know, and a uh, little more experience. Uh huh. Hey, with 4558, I was all, at all the fires. We used to go fires all the time. So right. we were trained good in that. So whatever I learned there, I would bring out to rescue or what I would bring as a, a lieutenant. Right. To the city, you know. Uh, so again, you happen to land on your feet and you get over the 30 truck, which ain't a bad. How did that happen? That happened. Uh, <laughs> I've never done division. this before. I've never done this before. <laughs> covered in the division and. Uh, I was working in 55 truck and Abe Heyman called me up, the captain. He said, listen, I got a medical leave for you. You want to come over? And I said, I'd love to come over, but I'm going on vacation. So I said, my buddy EJ, he's looking for a spot. So I put him over there. So he went and then I went on vacation. I came back and uh, I get a call again from Abe. He says, you want to come over? I got another spot. I'm like, who's out now? That was Gary Wright's spot. He had a vision problem in one of his eyes. So I said, well, I'm supposed to go to 27 truck. He said, well, I'll call you right back. He said, uh, go to 27 truck, do the vacation, then you hear UFO. So me and EJ, which we worked our whole career together uh, from day one, we were both lieutenants in the house. And then the order came down, and we both got it on the same order. Wow, look at that. Uh, look at that. Usually they give one and put one, but we know uh. a few people, and uh, – I guess Captain Jack looked out for us. He so, what was that guy's kidding. name? Abe, what? Abe Heyman. So, he's Abe, the only. He's a Abe Froman, the sausage Abe Froman, king the of the Chicago. Abraham, Chicago. He's Abraham a, Heyman. So, he's a Jewish Spanish dude. Spanish guys. Fluently in Spanish. Uh, I guess you could talk Jewish too. I don't know. Oi, so you see that? Get me the Mira, que pasa? Mira, que pasa? Get me the rice and beans. What's going on? <laughs> Uh, Abe, Abe's a tough guy, boy. Yeah. Say, tough it's like if, if Jose married up with Mike Milner, they would have Abe. <laughs> <laughs> he, was a little he was a 55 truck guy, and then he uh, he went to 28 truck as a lieutenant. He was a 30 as a uh, captain. And then he went up to 37 truck as a captain because EJ That's was bouncing. Spot, yeah, it's a good spot. EJ was bouncing up in the 7th Division. And he wasn't getting any promises. So ah. Abe said, we're going to get you to 30, and I'm going to go to 37. And Abe went up to see the division commander, which he knew, Chief Mo Renner. And he told him, whatever you want, Abe, you got. And he says, I want 37 truck. And he got it. And then we got EJ back to 30 truck. And they said, how the hell did you pull that off? So, well, we, Captain Jack, good man. Ah, uh, somebody saying in the chat they call him the Harlem Heeb. Is that true? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to say that to his face? No, no I'm just going to say that. You know, when you said he's a tough guy, you know. I said you, somebody you, else said it in the chat. That's what I'm saying. I said. Said. You want to say that in front of me or EJ because we'd have to take him out. That's <laughs> it. Good for you. I, I want to ask you. Down, we'd have to throw him down the shaft. I want to ask you. Oh, oh, hey. I want to ask you about this glorious, glorious painting over here. Talk, tell us about this. Oh, look at that. That painting was done by uh, a chief in Connecticut, uh, Jay Walsh, that was in 59 Engine. His brother, uh, Walsh, is a deputy up in uh, Connecticut. I forget the town, but he does portraits. And he did a portrait of EJ when he got promoted. And I told him, I said, that's beautiful. If you could ever get time to do me... And he did it. Wow. And he just did it free. It came out great. How long did you have to sit for that? Uh, what he did was he just took a couple of pictures oh. with a camera one night. We were in the firehouse. Took about five shots. 
And right. then he painted it right from that. Oh, wow. He did I didn't job. have to pose. Where do you get that hanging? That's in my uh, den. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that thing looks, I mean, damn good. Really it looks, realistic. It looks, it looks like you could touch my face, right? Yeah. It really does. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, he did numerous uh, other guys that called him up to do portraits also. He did EJ Tanny. He did Timmy Klett. That's a guy you got to get on your show. Wow. Yeah, we're going to get Tim on. Yeah. Timmy, That's a great, he has some talent, man. That's great. Oh, he's, that. he's unbelievable, the guy. And he's a sweetheart of a guy. Wow. Great, great family. His father was a chief up in Connecticut. Uh, matter of fact, his son is dating the fire femme in 42 truck. Who that? Eva, her name is. She just oh. got burnt out of job. Oh, my goodness. She just got burnt. She was on a roof cutting the roof. Really? She's she got a good burn on her arm, yeah. Huh. I think she's still out. That's probably the first girl I know to cut a roof. Nice. You know, Maybe, it, yeah. Look at her. You know, she was up there. So she was in the engine. She just transferred to the truck. Huh. 42, and uh, she's on medical leave now. Another tough little guy, you know? Well, yeah, she, as long as she can do the job, I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got I got to ask also, there's another photo here, and you got another nickname. So I want to hear about this one. This is about the Angel of Harlem. Oh, oh Pete, I got it right out of my notebook. <laughs> oh, you. This all started from Chief Corcoran. He was a lieutenant of 59 Engine. Uh, he's a chief in the 8th Battalion now, soon to be a deputy chief. Uh, so we get a call, a multiple alarm down in the 80s, downtown. And they reported to the command post. Chief Crothers was the chief. And uh, next door to the building, most of the fire was knocked down. And uh, next to the building was a, a dog grooming show uh, store. And they had some high-end dogs in there that were, you know, getting manicured, pedicured, <clears throat> shampooed. So, <laughs> the he, works. He tells me he's in Mac. Shampooed. Yeah. There's a uh, there's an exotic bird missing. Uh -oh. He says it's up on the top floor somewhere. He says I want you to go get it. So I'm like I don't know what. About bird. <laughs> so I get this one guy Al Murray, funny guy. He's out in Queens now. I says Al, you're good with animals, right? Go up and see if you can find this bird. So he goes upstairs and I sent the wrong guy. Because he gets on the radio and he goes, 3 0 V to 3 0. I don't see any birds up here, but there's a cockatoo up here. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers look at me. Brothers look at me and shake his head. Oh, oh, get lying, God damn it. You just stole my line, too. I was going to hit Pete with that one. I said, Did you now, know Pete was a bird watcher? He's seen a cockatoo. <laughs> Now he stole it. He says, I'm going to let some of the owners of the dogs in to get the dog. We still have a smoke condition. And uh, we go into the store with the owners, and there had to be 20 dogs in the place. And they were barking and screaming and jumping all over us. And Penny Crone was a newscaster. Oh, oh she loves oh, it, bro. bro. We know Penny. She comes into the store, and John Corcoran starts screaming out. He did. He saved all those dogs. That's the angel of Harlem. <laughs> what are you talking about? That guy right there. He's the angel of Harlem. He saved all these dogs. So now she wants to talk. I said, now, meanwhile, the companies that were first do, they get pissed off. Mm -hmm. so they said, you guys didn't do shit here. We yeah. <laughs> so Corcoran to this day always calls me the angel of Harlem. The angel of Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> on the radio, there's a song, Angel of Harlem. Oh, my and, God. Uh, it just traveled a little bit. I caught a couple of jobs with Chief Roby up in the 16th. And he would get on the radio and say, the angel's here. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> so that, that picture's the one that was in the firehouse, right? Looks like the guys put that above Yeah, it. well, it was a snapshot. And then they put that on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And, uh, angel, the angel, angel, red, red, devil. red devil. Oh, oh yeah. my ah, God. They can go along with that. They go far away with that, man. Yeah, that was John Corkin. That was his claim to fame on me. <laughs> so John, John's a great guy. Very smart chief. Chief in the job. Soon to be a deputy. And he'll be great. He's in the 8th Battalion now. He had a great career. We studied together, and we have a lot of fun together. Good stuff. Uh, was uh, was uh, Kirk there at that time? He was, right? Yes, Kirk was there. Kirk was my 24 partner. Oh, BG. Only you BG. could be. I called him that. I said, uh, hey, BG. He says, you can't call me that. 
I said, well, he said, you got to have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there he is. And then Connie, you know Connie? Yeah, I, I went. Uh, I was in 117 with Brian. He's the chief now, covering up in the 17th. Yeah, 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 yeah. And EJ, think, he's uh, my captain. He was, uh, me and him worked the whole career together. Yeah, I don't. I know his face, too. I don't know. Uh, where was he before that? Before he was 45 in with me. Both of us went to 58 truck. He went to 33. I went to four. He came to four. We both got assigned to 17. And we both got 30 truck. Wow. Then he left, came back as the captain of 30 truck. Wow. Then he became a chief in the 10th battalion. And now he's battling uh, 9-11 cancer right oh, now. Ah, that no, sucks. You got to say a prayer for him. Oh, we uh, definitely he's will. One, one tough son of a bitch. Is that yeah. who you said you were, you you took to Sloan the other day? Is that who you? Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah, wow. I'm his I'm his like driver, and there's other guys help out too. Jimmy Leach, Ralph Holquin. Uh, but he just hasn't had a tough time since he was diagnosed with this cancer. That's so, how long has he been out of the he's job? He's been about four years now, and he's been battling every day. Fucking he's one nice. tough son of a bitch. Well, bring him home. He went out and bought a three wheel bike. He goes out on a trike. He wow. drives it around. He walks. He's just a tough guy. Yeah, I know. I know him. I don't know where I know him, but I know his face. Maybe and he, was, he did a short stint in forty one engine. Oh, maybe that's where I know him then. Well, yeah, maybe, yeah, that's where I, I know think him. they came in. They got their group numbers and then they closed it down or something. Hmm. But uh, hey, you got they, some. You got some pretty big rack over there on your uniform, yeah. there, fella. Yeah, they're all. You know what they are? Unit I citations. Was, yeah, I was in a bar one time with this guy. And he <laughs> talked to this girl. It was Patty's day. Yeah. The girl says to him, you see that guy down the end of the bar? He had a rack. He looked like Patty Brown, Ralph Zizzo. <laughs> she goes, yeah. He says, you know what they are? They're all demerits. <laughs> <laughs> see me? I don't have any. He says, I'm a good guy. <laughs> all those guys with demerits, they're all fuck up. <laughs> what a good writers. I like yeah, it. I mean, I like right it. place, right time. Yeah, no doubt, man. Now, who drove you over there? You, it wasn't Nick, was it? Yeah, Nick was one of my drivers. My main driver was Gregory, Tom Gregory, but uh, Nick didn't do 24s. He did straight tours. Ah. So when he came in, if he wanted the irons, he'd, he'd take what he wants, whatever he wanted. But he drove me a lot. He could he could drive that rig like a needle in a haystack. Yeah, except when he was running over the company cat. <laughs> yeah. well, his other big thing in the firehouse was there's no cup in 30 truck that has a handle on it. Mm -hmm. Every yeah, cup yeah, cool. handle is broke off. Like if a guy brings cups in because his wife bought new cups, he takes each cup and breaks the handle off. And his reasoning, his yeah, reasoning is that, that you got to hold the cup with two hands to get acclimated to the heat. <laughs> That's Nicolello. All right. He trains. He puts that rig out every day. He spins the aerial. He has the guys climbing the aerial. He's got them crawling under the aerial with a line. He's he's a terrific senior guy for training. He did over 40, right? Didn't he just do 40? 40 he years. just did uh, 40 years, yeah. Wow. Nick, uh, Nick's some fineman, too. Good. No matter where you put him, he does his job, you know. All the guys in 30. Yeah. Any hearing, uh, Anthony Shallow, Billy Slattery, uh, you know, a bunch of guys, uh, Kevin Shanahan, all good guys that have been around, you know. Chris Love, his father was on the job. We got your number from Bo. We met at a, we had dinner with Bo, him one night. Right. Bo was uh, a probie in, 40, uh, in 59. He's down with 30. He's down with right. 30. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. He got a, a tattoo on his arm of a flag with 59 inches. I said, well, what's the other empty one for? He says, when I come to the truck. Ah. Said, to the truck. <laughs> <laughs> he's there now, anyway. He's got to probably get a tattoo with, with 30 truck on it. Uh, I got a question here. There was oh. a I, I would love to hear the story behind this right here, this crazy fire. Okay. Oh, that, was, that was St. John Divine's fire. Hmm. And we went on a multiple alarm. We went into the church. And the smoke was banging down. We went in that section there is like a, it's a little store. I didn't realize it until later. But we went in there and went up the staircase where the fire was. We had uh, 22 and 76 were up there with a line. So it was just getting too congested. So I said, let's come out, go down. Maybe we could vent the roof. 
So we threw the aerial to the roof. On top of the roof was a, a metal structure which was holding the church wall. So the, I didn't want to get onto the roof because there was too much weight. Little did I know after the fire that that structure went all the way to the floor. So it would have been all right to go on it, but I don't want to chance it. So they were setting up tower ladders in the back, and the tower ladders were breaking down, hydraulic leak. So I kept calling the chief, telling him, uh, you know, I got the ladder pipe in operation if you want. I'll put it together in two minutes. And he told me no, and then he finally said, go ahead, put it in operation. So with Nicolello and the right crew I had, right. John began, uh, Bob Singer, Kurt Coy, we put the ladder pipe into operation. And we used it as a curtain on the wall where the main church was because if it ever got into that church, all the draperies and everything else, it would have been a borough call. You know? what, did that, what did that go to, you said? That was like a fifth along. Fifth along. Yeah, well, I went there the next day. I think uh, Chief. I don't. I don't remember where I was, but I remember Chief we went Denny, there the next he had day. The job. He was the deputy. Uh, Joe Collin was there. Matter of fact, Commissioner Von Essen wanted to talk to me after the fire, and I thought we screwed up. But when we went to see him, he said that he hadn't seen the ladder pipe in twenty years. Uh -huh. And then also the commissioner said the same thing. Nigro was the commissioner, and I told him. I said, my guys train on this all the time. They they can put it together in three minutes. Yeah, and that is something. Stores, we had Nicolello. We put that right up. And yeah, we had a good right stream going, too. So well, if you, you see this steel structure there in the middle. See, I thought oh, that yeah, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that would have collapsed the roof, but I didn't realize it went down to the floor. We could have got up there to cut it, but. Oh, you know what it is? They don't use that that much anymore, obviously, because you got the the towel ladders. You know, well, you got so the towel, yeah, yeah. So, but right after that, they all started using it. Mm, yeah. That's good. We were getting calls from guys at housewives. They were yelling at us because now they had a drill on. Them. Yeah, they're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, one good thing you got to know your tools. You know, and that's it. I'm no telling doubt. you, I'll mention it again. Nicolello, he knew that rig like you won't believe. It. Every day he did something to that rig. Hmm. And he drove it good. Yeah, it's good. I used to tell Nick if we're on relocations, I said, you know, we got to relocate. Well, some companies take their time. I said, the relocations are very important. I said, because there's no fire protection. And plus, if you get up there in time, where we got to go? If they need a guy, if they need a company, you you're right the there. Job. I'm yep. telling you, me and Nick must have went in on three jobs like that. Really? I gave the first 10 4, 10 84 you could give up in uh, Inwood one time because we were hanging on the corner, you know. We knew it was going to go to a mobile. And we, we got the We're available. Up. Yeah. It ain't available. That. 10 ain't available. Oh, that's yeah. a one, I thought that was a 103 thing, bro. 10 well, ain't we available. Were, we were yeah. available for fire duty all the time. Even if the guys were coming back and they were taking time, I learned this from Patty Brown. Patty Brown said, if a box comes in in our neighborhood, we're taking it. They said, but Lou, we, we got to get dry and we got to get new clothes. He said, I don't give a shit. We'll, we'll take three hours when we take, finish this job. But if a job comes in first due in our area, we're taking it. We're not giving it up to someone else. I agree. Hell no. no. Patty Brown, another good guy. You know? Yeah. I met him when he was up in 69 engine. I, said, I covered there for a while. We did 24. Real gentleman. Petey, we got some other pictures of uh, the Lou in uh, 30 truck with 30 some trucks. other guys there. <clears throat> okay, that's, that's me and Mike Lyons. Mike Lyons was a uh, rotation through the house. Came out of 148 truck right off the boat from Ireland. That's a guy you should get on the, the show. And he uh, became a lieutenant, came up to Harlem. We got him into 30. And a uh, great guy. Unfortunately, he's out with uh, 9 11 cancer. Holy shit. Yeah. Holy crap. Like a young guy. But uh, Shame, we, call, we nicknamed him Seamus. Seamus. Fucking Seamus. Oh, how about this photo here? Where, where were you That's on the uh, Patty's Day uh, carrying one of the flags for the 343. 343 flags. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, man. And then uh, I guess that was it for the third. Is that uh, is that your diving pin on the top there? Yeah, I that's my Cadillac pin. I thought. 
That does look like a Cadillac emblem. Like I said, they're demerits. <laughs> they're all demerits. I meant Abe asked me, what is that? I said, I'm a Cadillac salesman. No. <laughs> you got a kick out of that. Hey, what did you find the biggest difference between when you worked in the Bronx and you worked in Harlem? Uh, tell you the truth, I liked Harlem a little better because it had better layouts of apartments, brownstone. I mean, we had that in the Bronx too, but you know, moving into Harlem as a lieutenant is different than being a fireman. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just hold the light, you know, direct the fireman, do the work. You know, uh, they knew their job. Unless you got a young guy, you teach him a little more. But in the Bronx, you know, the Bronx is where we I learned the job, really. Right. And then I just brought that experience to uh, Harlem. Any you know, difference in the attitudes or the way they approach things? Yeah, or? Same guys. It seems like uh, in the Bronx, guys get made and go to Harlem. And guys in Harlem get oh, made no. to go to the Bronx. Really? Huh. Yeah, they want to be in busy areas, both busy areas. I mean, in the 16th Battalion, that used to be the 5th Division years ago. And then they got rid of the 5th, and they uh, made it the 6th Division. 6th, right. And uh, we had we had a great chief, Chief Frank Donnelly, in the 16th. What a gentleman. What a fire officer. Mm -hmm. I had him as a lieutenant in 58. There was a job up in the Heights one night. He was the chief. And we were the fast truck. And he must have been looking up at the building. He saw the fire blow down the hallway. So he ran upstairs. But he told the aide, tell McCluskey he's the fast truck. Do not move. And he said, if he's looking for me, my helmet will be outside the door. <laughs> wow. That's how tough this guy. That's he a tough guy, up, right? Yeah. He ran up there in the hallway, no mask, no nothing. And to see, make sure his men were okay. Wow. He always worked out for his men, Frank. I think yeah, I we, always heard that about Harlem, right? Even the 12th and the 16th, because those guys stayed, in, like you said, they yeah. stayed in the area. Whether they got promoted lieutenant or captain, they always seemed yeah. to come back to that area. Yeah. And it was important because all the guys respected them for that yeah. reason, you know? And they knew them. We had, we had Jimmy Ginty in the 12th of time. Right. Uh, Kevin DeLagri, he came out of uh, 33 truck. He's a chief down there. Hilly. Uh, Hilly was another chief. Uh, Skimmerhorn, not Skimmerhorn. Uh, there was another guy. He died 9/11. You had March Banks down there, <clears throat> chief. And we also ran with the 11th Battalion. You had uh, Brett, Mr. Uh, chief Brett, and uh, Holzmeyer, all senior guys. Yeah, and that's all the most important. And all the battalions in the whole sixth division, they were great. Great. Chief. Well, that's the whole thing is because then the guys want to work for them. You know right. what I mean? Like they, they respect them. them. Right. right. Exactly. That's the best yeah. part of that. You know what I mean? They had a guy one time in the firehouse. He came into the kitchen. He yelled that he wanted the outside yard cleaned up. You don't go about doing that. So the guys wouldn't do it. I mean, if he came <laughs> down and said, listen, guys, would you mind doing it? Right, They'd exactly. Your car at the same time, they'll clean your car too. Right, right, right. Or if you so go down and start to, doing it, to talk to people. Right, no doubt so about it. Yeah. And Chief Griffin, which was a senior guy in the 16th Battalion, his motto was firm but fair. Like so, the uh, like the boxing out. referee. Yeah. Keep it up, <laughs> firm but fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. He stepped nice. out of the line. He'd scold you, but he was fair about it. You know what I mean? Right. Which is a good. Uh, how uh, how was it running with? I mean, obviously, when I was in one seventeen, I used to hear the eighteen hundred boxes, sixteen hundred boxes, twelve hundred boxes, fourteen hundred boxes, right? And it was always the same companies: twenty eight, thirty, twenty three, yeah. twenty six, right? Yeah, that whole so area. and forty truck. So how was it getting along with those guys? How, no how was problems. it? I worked with uh, mostly ran with sixty nine, twenty eight. Never had a problem. Uh, at the time, you had Captain Morris up there. You had Bobby Carberry, Kevin Flanagan, all senior guys. Never had one problem with any of them. I mean, there were times like, you know, I'd be going down Lennox. I know 28's coming down the block. I'm holding up on a corner to take it. I mean, even if it was a job, I'd take the block, but I'd give them the fire. Mm. And they did that to us, too. We, we respected anybody. Nobody would try to jap out another company. You know? Well, you know what it is, too, is when you guys were going to so, when, when they were going to so much work, Yeah. right? It it just seems like it would be easy because there's only a few companies for that for that area, right? Yeah. I mean, it's such a small area considering. Yeah, yeah it is really. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's incredible. And the uh, you know the small areas too. We had a nice BI area. 
uh, for building inspection and uh, who's never have? heard of it? I'm, I appreciate you saying uh, building <laughs> inspection. <laughs> who's never heard of BI? And I'm, I appreciate you explaining. Uh, Lou did a great building inspection. Lou did a great BI did. from the apparatus floor. I never did oh. BI. I never did a day of BI as a lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> I went out. It must I went be out. a thing. Allegedly. I Allegedly. would do SIDS, SIDS cards, but I, I do SIDS ah, too. That's a, I, I do SIDS cards, too. Think alike. That's going to help us. Mm -hmm. right? SIDS information is for our benefit. Yep. I've heard that before. Ah, right? That's exactly what I did, Jim. Yeah, exactly. pat yourself on the back. Yeah, you can. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> I feel even better get, about myself now that I know that Jim uh, did the same thing. Did you ever get a chance to work in Brooklyn, Jim? I did. I did cover. They called me up one time. They said, uh, Lou, you're going to 148 truck. I said, where the fuck is that? <laughs> in Brooklyn. I said, I know it's somewhere over the bridge. <laughs> I'm in the 6th Division. They said, well, we need guys there. So I said, all right. I call up 148 trucks, Borough Park. Who do I get but Mike Gala? He's a lieutenant there at the time. And we were in the eligibles together, me, Mike, a few other guys. So I said, Mike, I'm coming out to... Uh, do a vacation. Oh, come on out, Jim, you know. So we were 24 partners. First day I walk in the firehouse, he shows me his locker. There's a little picture of a little kid in a snowshoe. He says, you know who that is? I said, no. He said, that's me. I was a kid in this neighborhood. And he was a fireman there. He was a lieutenant there. And he was wow. a captain there. Oh, wow. Mike, and then I think he became a chief in that battalion. Now he's a staff chief. Another good guy, Mike. Mike Gallagher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Did you catch so any I work there? in Brooklyn. I tell you, I didn't catch anything when I was there. Yeah. A couple of run, a couple of Mario and Dreddy drivers. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I just closed my eyes. <laughs> I just closed. I was, wait, I was trying to get that out of him. Did you see that, oh, Ruffy? Yeah, I tell them, they, these guys, oh, man. I had a, a run, a relocation in Manhattan, and my chauffeur was barreling, and I'm like, Oh, man, he's going to hit something. I said, but he, he's got time. He's going to do this. All of a sudden, we whacked this bus. There was glass. Right there. <laughs> there was glass in my hair. Right <laughs> hey, we got to do a CD-19. That's it, you know. But uh, Brooklyn guys, they like to run. Yeah. We tell them you got short buildings. We got tall stories. Uh, <laughs> I heard it. I heard it before. I heard it. But uh, a couple of... Tours here and there. I covered it in uh, SA in Staten Island. That was mm. nice. You know, it was a chance. I just wanted to see the world. Yeah. I wanted to see how the other companies operated, you know. How about Queens? You work in Queens at all? Queens, well, no, just Rescue Four. Not oh, right. Really what am I saying, Queen? Yeah, you worked the Rescue Four. But uh, I never really did any time in Rescue Four as a lieutenant. Mm. Uh, mm. Both of I did. Uh, you know, then all the pranks they used to do in the firehouse, you know, my guys. On a relocation, they would go into the bathroom. They loosen up all the urinals and the sinks. They would take the hose. We had one guy who was like a plumber. But when somebody went in and pulled the lever, they'd get soaked. <laughs> They're always fucking around like that. You know, they would put flour in the in the blow dryer. Not that I had, not that I had any hair to blow. <laughs> they would fill it with baby powder. <laughs> this guy go in there, hit that. Turn it on, it would blast them all over. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They would even put it in the guy's locker. They would even put it in his locker just to uh, break chops, you know? Yeah. Flower Another bed. thing was we used to burn pepper. You ever hear that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to burn pepper in the frying yeah. pan, put it in the pole hole. And, yeah. Next thing you have the whole bunk room coughing their asses off. It is incredible, but, isn't it? How that kid does. Uh, <laughs> People are snotting. Somebody can, somebody can write a book on just the pranks that, yeah. that took, takes place in the firehouse, man. It would be. We had one in 45 Engine where we had this African American lieutenant, Jenkins. And uh, Dennis Devlin got the CPR Annie doll, put a blonde wig on it, put it in his bed, put a cigarette in the hand and a can of beer. <laughs> and he came downstairs and he said, Dennis. There's a woman in my bed. <laughs> Get her the fuck out of here. He said, what are you talking about, Lou? What are you talking about? No women came in here. He says, don't tell me. There's a woman in my bed. She's drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette. Get her the fuck out of here. <laughs> we went up with him. Look, yo, we went upstairs. Dennis jumps in on the bed and grabs the girl. It's only the Annie doll, you know. Oh, Excuse my God. Me. 
you guys, you guys are going to give me a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> really, they took it though. They were good. You know, they were all good about it. You know, you know, Louie, it could have been it could have been worse. You could have someone could have pooped in a beaker and sent it to 270. Oh my god. Oh my. Allegedly. 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 I didn't poop in a beaker. I pooped in a package. Neary pooped in a beaker. <laughs> Perfectly too, by the way. Yes. The, uh, yeah. I'm laying in bed one night and thirty, and all of a sudden I hear the doors go up and I hear motorcycles. I'm like, what the fuck? <clears throat> all of a sudden there had been about four motorcycles in the firehouse. Doing wheelies in the back. <laughs> oh my god, I'm go going. back upstairs, right? I'm not even going down there. That's it, don't go downstairs. <laughs> go on. I didn't hear no crash. That's so it. We had our, our bikers were out for the night, and they came <clears> out <throat> there. Hello, Michael Byrne, good guy, another great fireman. He has tattooed on the inner lip FDNY. Get out of here. Yeah, if he shows you his lip, it'll go like this. Yeah, I had a kid I grew up with who had a tarantula on the inside. Yeah, of him. Like, that's got to hurt. He's a big-time hockey player, and his kid's a Port Authority cop now. Nice right, kid. And uh, Mike was good. When the shit was on, Mike was there. Like all the other guys in 30, they were, they were great guys. I enjoyed them. I didn't have to do nothing. All I got to do is call the chief. So, so. You had to keep that Kirk Lester in line. That's what you yeah, had to Yeah, keep do. him in line once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of my with favorite the, guests. With the big um, sword. He used yeah, yeah. to come in, and one day I look in the day book, I see happy birthday to this guy. Happy birthday. I said, who put this in the book? He said, well, that's what we're doing, 43 truck. I said, well, you're not in 43. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of all this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, it's nice. Oh, it's it's nice. Girls, it's yeah. nice. Yeah. No, Kurt was good. I fish used to do Actually, Fish yeah, used to do that, too. Kurt. Kurt got a lot of time. He was a great softball player. Yeah. I think he had a weird name, Kurt. Uh, I forget his DJ name. Oh, we didn't know he had a DJ. Oh, yeah, he was a DJ. Oh, yeah. Why did you tell me that we had him all? We like smashed a the flat, you know. So, yeah. What the, what the, what the, what the, what the? I'm surprised, yeah. What was his name? Captain Kirk, I think it was. Captain oh, Kirk. Oh, shit. God. Oh. He, did, he did text me today. He was excited that you were coming on today. Right, yeah. He's a good guy, Kurt. No, good guy. stuff. But he, he, like, went through, too. You know, 42, 43 truck. Oh, yeah. You know, Real yeah. deal. And, uh. He had some time, bro. You were his pop yeah. when he came over there. <laughs> yeah. His father was a cop. Yeah. He lived over on Stratford Avenue where we used to, when I was at 58, we used to respond over there all the time. We used to get work over there with 96 and 54. Sometimes we'd go into Hunts Point. Mm. I mean, the work was around. But the funniest thing was when Wacky Jack <laughs> wanted to bail out the guy that caught that, that's the guy with the uh, with the orange uh, mustache. Yeah, we just he had a pole mole hanging down. <laughs> a he, pole like mole. He, was a <laughs> he, uh, he was some piece of work. That guy. He trained it. <laughs> He'd be crawling in on his back, and his, his big thing was right on, right on. You know, and everything was with pleasure. Everything. I like that. I with like pleasure. That. With pleasure. Oh, my face hurts. Yeah. Yeah, man. Pete, is it about that time? Unless we got another story. I think it's got to be about that. Oh, he's serious now. He put his glasses on. Hold oh, on a minute. He's checking his list. Hold on. He's checking his list. Here we go, guys, because you know what time it is. Wait a minute. First, you might on. Take it easy, Peter. Hold on, Pete. Calm down. Oh, 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 oh. Just stick your finger over there. Yeah. Oh. Then you had the picture of the cement heads, the four of us. Ah. ah. See? Come on, see? You're a little, see? High, you're a little see? high on coconut water over there. Come on. Ooh. What can Brown do for you? Uh, let me find it. Let well, it could me be in my it could be in my underwear. I can tell you that much. That's uh that's where it is right now. Yeah. Cement heads. Yeah, those are the if you see the top one, there's a, a patch on a roll of turtle paper. That's, <laughs> uh, that's when they gave me my patch. I had six months in the company. Who's on the left with the uh the wife beater? The guy with the mustache. <laughs> the, the guy on the left, the right of me. No, uh, yes. Yeah, the right of right. you, wife Peter. Yeah, that, that's Dennis Devlin. He was a chief. He died 9 11. Oh, oh shit. And I worked that's with him. You, that's you in the right next to him. Who's next to you? Next to me is EJ. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's your, holy shit. Wow, you guys go do go back. And then who's next to him? The other guy, that's Eddie Alfarano. And we all came. Like Dennis came to 45. Then EJ came to 45. Then I came. Then Al came. <laughs> And we just the bottom picture I think was when Dennis got promoted. We all uh, we all hung out together. We were like inseparable. 
Yeah. Now that's you guys right. on the bottom. Yeah, that's the same. It's the next, the first guy's EJ, right? Then, Adam, then Dennis, then me. Oh shit! Look at that. How many years later is that? The cement heads. Oh, uh, the cement heads they call us. I guess they figured me and Dennis were the only sand hogs. <laughs> So I guess they couldn't get through to us or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> they were a little they thick. Like, a little thick. If we were, yeah, if we were working a day tour or something and we were going to go out at night and have a few, the guys would be petrified because they knew we were going to come back. Come back and wreck <laughs> the place. <laughs> wreck the place. Oh, yeah. the beds. So Put, see that guy's hiding in the well in the in the in the well hole, the hose wagon. <laughs> Just trying to sleep, trying to find, uh, get away from him. We, we always told him, we'll fucking find you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll find you. <laughs> That's what, when you mess with us all, we used to tell him. Wow. Nice. And then, uh, what else yeah, you got? Let's, before we get to the old school tip of the day, what else? That's, uh, that's all I'm, nothing else, I guess. That's it. You got no other shout outs? Talk to me. Uh, shout outs. Let me see. Oh, one rescue four, Harry Ford. One of the toughest firemen I've been with. We had the floor above it, a job. It's winter time, snowing, snow on the ground. We go portables, up the portables. All of a sudden, I see Harry start sliding off the roof. He slides off the roof, down about 20 feet. Come gets on. Up, gets up and runs back up the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, Harry, you all right? Yeah, let's go. Come on. We got to get yeah. this job. You know? And the other thing with Harry was we went diving one time. He was my partner. So we, we go out in the, with our CVs on and all that shit. They got the snorkel. And we're on a rope, and we're going to go down to the platform to do our exercises. So he goes, you ready? We give the thumbs up. He goes, yeah, we start to go down. So I'm looking at Harry, and Harry's eyes are like bulging out of his head. And I'm like, what's wrong? Is something wrong? And he's going like this. like He shoots up to go up. So I go up after him. I said, Harry, what happened? He says, I forgot to take the snorkel out of my mouth. He never put the BC in his mouth. <laughs> what is it? What do you mean? Oh, well, you know, and when you're diving, you got a BC. You put the. It's like a, a mouthpiece you put in your mouth. Right. To breathe. To breathe. So you go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We down about forty feet. He was <laughs> <down the snorkel. laughs> the water's going into the snorkel. And he's Holy like, oh, shit! Down. I said, Harry, you got to put the BC. You got to put the mouthpiece. Oh, in. I see. So he had just the snorkel in there. You didn't yeah. Stitch it so out. soon he went down, it started filling up. No the water. shit. So he's trying to hold his breath, I guess. And down I 40 know, feet, yeah. Well, I forget how many feet was down, but it was enough for him to go. I got to yeah. walk, you know. So I shot up after him. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> how did you like the diving? Did you like? Did, you didn't mind the diving with that? Was, I never really dove, you know, for anybody. We got suited up a lot of times. But we had to go through the training and everything right. else. We got suited up a couple of times out in Rockaway, but I never really went into it, dove in, mm. down into it. Right, the right, right. Yeah, it doesn't happen did, all that often. Yeah, no. Usually, a lot of times, the PD gets in. You know, they, they helicopter the guys right in. They're right there. Yeah. I know I know a lot of guys in the rescue, they were like, yeah, they could have it, right? I mean, in the end, who yeah, the hell wants to do that no. shit anyway? Yeah. I think yeah. They, they might do it a lot in Manhattan, Rescue One. Yeah, they yeah. do. Rescue One probably does oh, it, I would say. Staten Island does, too, a lot. Yeah. They do Staten Island does a lot, too. Five yeah. does it, probably. We had yeah. another guy, Roy Campbell, from Rescue Four. <laughs> he went out to Rescue Five. He was a good guy. Butch Foley, another guy. He passed away. Yeah, I worked with great guys my whole career. I was, yeah. I was blessed. Dave Dave yeah. Winthrop is in the, in the chat. I saw I, him. He yeah. was at Rescue Four. I must have seen him two or three times in a row, like in a, in a month or two, going in. And every time I used to see him, like we would tend the rope or whatever, he just would give me that look like, oh, shit, I, I can't blame yeah. I got to go do this shit yeah. again, right? Yeah. Yeah. Harry's fault was a say, One of the dives we had to do was off Staten Island was a deep dive. We had to go down and do a late line search. So I'm going down, and it's black water. I mean, you can't even see it. Fuck that. I'm out. I have the gaze to my eyes, and I'm like, if I run out of here, I'll kill you. I'll be dead. But I'm going down, and they talk with me on the communication. Right, so, yeah. It was uh, Yui, Yui Connolly, I think his name was. But anyway, we're going down, and they say, are you there yet, Mac? I said, no. He said, are you on the bottom yet, Mac? I said, no. And they keep asking me, and I'm saying, how much line are they putting out? You know, I could be going into a frigging tanker somewhere. So finally, I hit the bottom and I stirred it all up. It was a, a waste of a drill, you know. But uh, 
the communication is good, but I didn't know where the hell I was going. I thought yeah. I was going to a that, tank. To me, that would be the only thing that would calm me down is having the guys to talk to. Talk to you? When yeah. you can't, you can't see, see shit, shit. shit. forget well, it. Yeah. But then even when you, uh, you know, you hit something solid, ah, okay, everything settles down. It's like I teach the guys on a roof of a building when they're walking to the edge of a roof in a row frame or a brownstone, there's no parapet. So I said, don't walk to the edge. Get on your belly and crawl. Crawl to the edge and look over. You'll be more, it's like a security blanket. You know? Yep. Because one wrong move, oh, you're, yeah. you're going to fall off that roof. Somebody no hits doubt. you. You got to really watch yourself on the roof. I was mm. big on that. Especially I agree. When I felt the roof. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Pete. <clears throat> yes. You awake still? I'm of course I'm awake. <laughs> All right, just check. I have now much damn coconut water. I'm <laughs> surprised he hasn't gone to the bathroom. Uh, now you can play it. All right, guys. It's time for the old school tip of the day. 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 It's all yours, Big Mac. Okay. First thing I want to say is, uh, did I get the right page in? No, I knew I fucked that up. Oh, boy. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time, kid. Right here. First thing I want to say, just listen to your senior men, guys, and even the young officers today. Listen to your senior men. Okay, ask questions before the job, after the job. Critique the job. Go back. See what you could have did better. See what you, you know, messed up on and work on your bad points. The other thing is I say that we have a lot of time in the firehouse. Most of us do 24s. So during that 24 period, if you could take two hours out of that 24 and pick up a book, ladders, engine operations, training bulletins, whatever it will be, it will make you a better fireman. It would make you a better fireman. Because as much as you read, some of it's going to stick against the wall. Okay? And just remember always, you're only as good as your last fire. Hmm. When things are good, fires are around, guys are hugging and kissing. When there's no work, <laughs> they're bitching. This guy didn't bring the buns in. This guy <laughs> So just remember, stay safe. Enjoy the job because I wish I could do another 28 years. Yeah, man. Amen, brother. I do it all over. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that funny when when there's work, right? How everybody gets along. Oh. It's such a sweetheart, yeah. point, you know. Yeah. And then uh, when there's no work, everybody yeah. cries about the littlest shit. Who didn't bring in the bacon? <laughs> Who didn't bring the donuts? Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't do committee work. Yeah. Now you go out the door, you're at a job. You come back, they're, they're like tongue kissing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you did a great job at that. Oh, yeah. You yeah did let's this. go you out. Let's go. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> They get the shaft, you know what I mean? Get the oh, shaft, baby. Hey. Last one in. Got a you guys the shaft. Listen, guys, thank you again for having me. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, I uh, we enjoyed having you. It was great night. to hear from you, man. And really, it was a good time. If you can, anybody wants to donate anything to uh, the Joey D Foundation, that will be fine. Uh, chief <laughs> D. Bernardo was a great chief. Treated the men perfectly. And uh, it was too bad what happened to his son and the rest of those guys on Black Friday. But, mm. you know, uh, it's a dangerous job out there. So, guys, be safe. That's all thank I got to say. You, thank you. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Jim. I had a good time, yeah. man. I laughed a lot. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Just uh, hang loose there. We're going to run yeah. through some stuff and then uh, right. Petey's going to take it away. Ruffy, you have any shout outs, Ruffy? I do. Hold on one second. Here. Oh, right. you do all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. That. Pete. Uh, I can't, maybe I won't say who said it, but I want to say uh, hello to Jackie Moran. She's uh, one of our best uh, uh, watchers here, best uh, fans, biggest fans. And uh, I wanted to give her a little shout out. So uh, shout out to Jackie. That's from uh, Maslinski. Hello. Ah, oh, Petey Pete's. Petey Pete's. Ah, all right. What else? That's it? That's the only That's shout it. out. That's all I got, kid. That's all I got. Wow. Quick, quick shout out. I'm know, in and Pete. out. Like, Come on, Petey, you healthy guy. Get it out there. What do you got? Spit it out, kid. Yeah, you got what do you no, got? I got nothing. 
I got nothing. <laughs> nothing? Me? Nothing, me? man. All right. No, no, no. All right. I'm I'm good. Good. Oh, well, Mac falls asleep over there, would you? Give us the plunge, will you? I want to give a shout out to uh, Huel, uh, Huel Foods for uh, supplying me a <laughs> healthy yeah. meal today yeah. I am, uh, that I paid for because they're not a sponsor, but they will. Uh, so, all right. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, you know the deal. If you're watching us, you should be listening to us as well on iTunes, Podcast, Spotify, and wherever fine audio podcasts are found. We're on pretty much every platform. Mm -hmm. Hit subscribe. It's free. And then you can listen to us at the gym or, uh, you know, even on the way to a job when you want to be, you know, super yeah. excitable and all that. Just oh. listen to the cab. Come on. All right. Also, guys, if you're here on YouTube.com, slash getting salty experience, hit the like, subscribe, and share button. That is the number one currency that we uh, trade in right here is uh, you guys helping us syndicate ourselves. So uh, I think we're over 20,000 20, followers now, but we uh, we really got to hit. We got to pump those are rookie numbers. We got to pump those numbers up. We need your help. So guys, get on it. It's a campaign. Do it. Um, Do it. Head on over to Instagram at Salty Dog Inc. Mr. Refrano's photo photos there are awesome. And uh, you also get last minute info on the show. Getting salty apparel.com is actually a way we do uh, pay the bills. And uh, you guys know what we sell there t shirts, uh, accessories. So check us out. Uh, the holidays are here and amongst us. Get it, get in now before the supply chain issues smash everybody. Um, guys, also thank you to everyone who hit us up in the super chat tonight. We really, really, really appreciate that. Luke, I remember in particular tonight. Um, thank you. Uh, guys, remember again, like, subscribe, and share. That is the number one currency on this show. Hit it. Uh, it gets us out there. Hit it. It's easy. Go over to the Facebook, uh, guys, to getting salty fans. That is uh, not created by us, but it's by you guys, for you guys. And what a community. You guys got about 20,000 going in there soon uh, as well. Um, so uh, lots of great content there. Email the show at gettingsaltyexperience at gmail.com where you guys, uh, if you guys have questions for our Q&As or, of course, any uh, recommendations for uh, for people. Lou loves to get those recommendations in. First thing on a Monday morning is the best time to hit them. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Coob's Podcast at gmail.com. Coob's Podcast at gmail.com for all of our Cup of Joe and Fuego uh, content. That's helmet cam footage, uh, mustaches, and tattoos, and Kitchen tables, Fire right? houses, Fire houses. Right? you oh, name it. You your old lady, it. if you want some pictures, your old lady. Maybe we'll do the hottest old lady too. Hey, you know what? <laughs> nice. what I'll at take the least. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Email. At least when I'm looking through the emails now, I'll be like, oh, look at that. Yeah, give us a little, give us a little inspiration and uh Stop that. that. Put that out there. Send pictures to the hottest old lady, bro. There you, you know go. What? Hottest old lady contest. Okay. 30 old yeah. 30. We're gonna yeah. spend an hour choosing from the top 100. Yeah. Um, and these can, we can blur the photos. So send feel free to send anything. I'm gonna put Saul's in. wife in there. She was one of the hottest. He sent a nice picture. Saul, sure, remember Saul? Saul yeah, married up. Saul's all right. Bro. I haven't even seen Saul, and I know he married up. So Coob's yeah. podcast at gmail.com. And yeah. that, my friends, is all the news. That's awesome. Different. All right. So next week we have uh we got a Brooklyn guy. Greg Picconi, engine 230, led 132. And the following Thursday, we got the Galleon and Rocky R2 show. I don't know what we got for the next two Mondays, Ruffy. We'll have to talk about it. I got it. somebody from Monday. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Oh, oh how you doing? He's on his game. Gone. He's back from Moose Hunt. He's on his game. Excellent day. All right. That's Ooh. all I got, bro. We got the uh, we're booked up here. And then Ruffy goes away. I think we'll be off that week that Ruffy's away. Well to see you. The sixth and over. Be taking a hiatus. All right. All right. Nice All right, Pete. Mark. Great job. Appreciate you coming on, man. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Big Mac. Excellent show. Oh, thank you so you much. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you very much. We thank appreciate. you for coming on. Very much. You did, you did dirty truck in the Bronx and all I'm proud tonight. Good. And I don't care what Kirk Luster says about <laughs> you. You're a good guy. <laughs> you made the map. Dirty truck made the map. Yeah. Dirty, dirty. <laughs> Yeah, all right, fellas. All right, stay on. We'll talk to you after the show, Big Mac. And uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, stay low and go. All right, everybody. We'll see you at the big one. Cheers, everyone. Yeah. Cheers.